If you're not in Oklahoma, they sound like this. Ooh. 
No. I suddenly had a Harry and the Hendersons moment. That went way back. I got. Yay! Yay! Nationally. Oh, that's cool. Amen. Down, down on Northeast 23rd Street. <clears throat> cool stuff. It's midsummer this <laughs> upcoming week. It's the holiday uh, special. So Yay! we are going to do another holiday special. Ooh. Um. If you haven't tuned into our previous holiday specials, it's okay. You haven't really missed that much. Um, our group of intrepid heroes has successfully saved two towns from two different blights, um, one of which was the Lich of Ebenezer Scrooge for Christmas. And then for Valentine's Day, they solved the mystery of Ville de l'Amour, the city of love, not having any love in it. Um, they successfully solved those at the behest of a man who they know as the physician and or Roger. Uh, Roger. <laughs> Roger. The doctor. I still don't think that's his real name. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so since it's, you know, it's a fair bit of, we had our adventure with Vilda Lamore happening in the, the very, very, very early age stages of spring. Um, and this is in midsummer. So for the last few weeks, presumably you guys have just been out and about having fun um leveling because you guys are level nine characters now um and you have been asked by when when you guys left at the end of valentine's day the physician gave you guys a bunch of cool stuff well hathor gave you guys a bunch of cool stuff and then um, the physician gave each of you a communicator coin, um, which is um, a coin that has his face on it. Uh, <laughs> very humble man. And oh yeah, if he, oh yeah, so so humble. He can't, can communicate to you via that imagine. coin, and it literally his little face just animates and says, "Hey guys!" Um, and so you have been requested to meet at Rendezvous, which is Hathor's bar in Ville de la Moore, um, the day before Midsummer Eve. So, um, yeah, so Midsummer, Midsummer Eve, day before. That's when you need to be there. <laughs> All right, I got you. I, I got your math now. <laughs> so, um, have we been traveling together, or have we? Oh, it's up to you guys. Alvaro, if we've had a chance to hang out together in, you know, the love town, Alvaro, he's not going to tell anyone, but this has been like the best time of his life. Like, there's people hanging around all together. No one's trying to stab him in the back. And, and, um, and no one's died. I mean, some people have died, but they didn't really know them because it's a town, you know. And so it's been a really nice time. He's uh, he's mellowed just a tiny, tiny bit. You, that's good. You've that's mellowed. Nice. Yeah, and that's my way of saying I didn't take a level in barbarian. I took a level <laughs> in goat. <laughs> you got sneakier, not angrier. That's so, right. I just stuck go. around Alvaro and kept an eye on him. <laughs> Well, that was a bit annoying. Every time I turn around, I'd be like, "Hey, oh hi, Sathari, how are we'll you?" Just be hand on hips in this look. <laughs> <laughs> no, it belong. I'm returning it to these people. Like they obviously. Alvaro. Well, it's just hey, hey, Alvaro. Yeah. Have you have you eat have you eat bedrock yet? Uh, no, what, what? Is it that what this hard substance is, and I can't escape from? <laughs> You digging? You just you just keep digging yourself into a to a bigger hole, mate. It's when don't you have like you know them poofy magics where you can get us away from here? <laughs> I've got that. I, I and and I've been sticking around town as well because oh this is a lovely place. I've I don't think I've ever seen a more more perfect place. In fact, actually, because they love my music and I I play wonderful love songs and. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, and I do love poems. I, you know, people buy my sonnets. It's fantastic. And I just, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I've been making a little bit of money here. It's been, been really nice. I'm going to definitely go um, invited Elisard to play yeah. a few times. For sure. 
I knew uh, an elf man one time way out west who had a guitar and wasn't very good at it. Uh, Alice Hart is much better at music. <laughs> Crossover reference. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's uh he's not bad. Well the good news for you, Isa, is uh if you guys have hung around town for any considerable amount of time, you'll notice that although um the people aren't like depressed or fighting each other anymore, they aren't quite as lovey dovey as they used to be. Um it's more of a regular town now. With oh. just a lovely reputation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I try to change that. <laughs> Elisard is our source of love magic. That's right. I'm like a matchmaker and, and bod all in one. I'm actually trying to hook up some people together. It's... He has them do little surveys. That's right. <laughs> I remember one time that you had people sitting across the table from each other, but just for like a little bit, and then they kept switching. <laughs> and they would sit across the table from other people and yes. that was that that seemed like fun it's a strange strange new concept it's it's called speed mating <laughs> and the number of things they left behind like they get up and leave and just leave like their wallet laying right there it was i, I really enjoyed that night it was good i got several i got several coin per i mean names phone numbers <laughs> Yes. Did you know you can program a sending stone and then you just click <laughs> yes. on one rune and it calls the person <laughs> you want to? It's fantastic. Yes. Or you you can't to... just insert cell phones. In <laughs> I, said, I said sending stone. It's a sending thing. Stones. Uh, I got a speed dial on my sending stone. What's, what's the proper greeting for a sending stone? Hello, it, moto, don't, don't, hey, don't, don't, don't. hey, this is me. Don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't freak out. <laughs> no. Okay, so um, I have I, I I tell you I I have attempted to spend the least amount of time <laughs> as I possibly can. I just pop I pop in for a bit and then I pop back out to the woods, right? Mm -hmm. And like one time I come back and I just have this real wild look in my eyes and I'm just like, I haven't slept in three days. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it's affected me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Just all of a what? sudden. What? Why is Isa talking to that, um, that, that torch post? <laughs> oh, I just remembered. I have to thank Elisar very much for always returning that coin to me because I would always walk by and he was playing music and his hat was there and I'd give him a tip and <laughs> every time <laughs> it was the most special possession that I shouldn't be giving away so thank you very much for that yeah so sorry you shouldn't be giving this away you should really be holding on to it I know it could come in handy later I know I, I'm trying yeah. but yeah. I, mean, so I love the fact that you're so giving you're a very giving person but you know, you gotta make sure to hold on to the things that matter. Oh, now I, now I probably owe you some coin, don't I? Yeah, probably. <laughs> That's okay. We made plenty last time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you guys find yourself in rendezvous, I presume, on the day before Midsummer's Eve. Yes, something it's like Midsummer's that. Midsummer's Eve, Eve. Yeah, Midsummer's Eve, Eve. Um, I say that to Eve, the bar, the, the barmaid. <laughs> so it's uh, Thursday. Something like that. Hathor has some lovely Chablis that she just keeps handy because Elisard loves it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's his favorite. Um, but if you want some water, the water is free and clear now um, or anything like that. <laughs> Everybody around um, seems to... There are a few people on dates. Um, there's Joe, the drunk guy that has oh. just is always here, right? Um, no! No! <laughs> I've helped Joe home many nights. <laughs> and then um, you've got, you know, the couples, but then you also just have like, you know, just some blokes out after dinner um, or after work and, you know, just regular people as well. And you can definitely tell that. Um, although a more deal of a more, a more, Ville de la Mort. Although Ville de la Mort. They in common. Right. 
Ville de l'Amour has a this like great reputation of being um, this love filled town. It is no longer magically filled with love. Uh, oh, so um, that so that wasn't a regular thing. That was just because of all the shenanigans. And Hathor kind of you know hands you whatever you're drinking and says, you know, Roger asked me to keep kind of a low profile, so I haven't been. Uh, accentuating the yeah. reputation of this town like I used to and gives a wink um, and I haven't been spreading it around <laughs> so Alvaro's you get the... a little bit worried because that means he's maybe been feeling this way naturally mm. oh. um, and you kind of get the idea that although Sezian was tainting the sister and full of like hatred and sadness, she generally, as a Cupid, because they're both Cupids, she generally fills it with love and it makes people lovey. Um, but she's been asked to keep kind of a low profile uh, by the physician. And so she's just let the water kind of run its course and it's kind of back to natural water now. Um, so yeah. You guys, I'm sure, catch up if you've spent any time apart. Um, she also explains that Sessian kind of left shortly after the sister incident. She hasn't seen him since. She misses him because he's her brother and mm -hmm. she's worried about him because um, they didn't, although they had a nice chat, you know, after everything, he kind of uh, left kind of abruptly. Um, but yeah, it's kind of what we're looking at. The position's not here. Um, sorry guys, Roger, I'm sure he'll show up, uh, but if he says he's gonna meet you here, he's gonna meet you here. Uh, it's just a matter of hanging out and waiting. This ain't a bad place to wait if you ask me though. Uh, and she goes to try to convince Joe to drink some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull out, you know, just a, just a deck of cards. Just start, you know, start dealing little boys in. <laughs> um, just for goes to his backpack, opens the backpack, reaches in, pulls out a pouch, opens the pouch, inside is like a little coin purse, opens the little coin purse, inside the little coin purse is some, uh, is some, is some, uh, you know, paper, parchment. He unfolds all that, inside that is the coin. He takes it, puts it on the table, and like... I'm just staring at it. Doesn't move. <laughs> I say, Alvaro, you know... There's something they say about, you know, watching pots and, you know, boiling and all that. Yeah. Yeah, just just come here. Let me let me deal you in. Oh, get a card game. I like it. Um, Elisard, what is your passive perception? Because I don't have it written down. I feel like it's high, though. Good question. My passive perception is a 15. Yeah, I felt like it was high. Um, Okay, so especially since Elisard is here all the time, um, doing <laughs> gigs, reading poetry, playing songs, all that good part. Um, you notice a unusual customer, so someone who's not here frequently, uh, who just comes in every once in a while out of the blue moon, um, and it is Amadeus, the priest from the church, um, is there, and he um, kind of sidles up to the bar, and um, Hathor gives him um, something that looks like mostly watered-down whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to see um, Amadeus walk in that I immediately jump into a rendition of Rock Me Amadeus. <laughs> Um, <laughs> why does he, he, he do that does one of these like nobody noticed <laughs> that this man is singing a song about me it's fine <laughs> i'm just trying <laughs> to go unnoticed oh no, rock me I, I whispered to ice rock me amadeus is it like asking for a stoning like a punishment like someone's done something wrong no, rock no, me amadeus. no mate it's a metaphor it's a metaphor it's a metaphor I thought those were for like grazing cattle. No. That's what metas were for, is for grazing cattle. No mind. <laughs> okay. No. I'll I will i will explain it to you, but it'd take a while. <laughs> By the way, this whole time I've been <laughs> Sathari has been eyeing Alvaro's coin on the table and trying to like secretly find his pouch to make sure that's not <laughs> His coin. <laughs> and sigh of relief. It's not. Yeah, Alvaro has a has etched a little A into the side Ouch. of his so he can keep track of it. I gotta make sure it doesn't move or change. I mean that's why I gotta bury it down in that stuff. He could be watching any time. Mm -hmm. It winks. 
how, how did you learn how did you learn to put your like really special items deep inside of a bag that's inside of another bag that's inside of another bag to make it hard for people to steal them from you what if they just stole the first bag what if you think <laughs> like it's a Kobo method you gotta like stack things inside of things and inside of things I learned it from a guy mm-hmm. yeah it's it's just how we do safari, you know. Don't <laughs> don't don't think too much about it, mate. Well, remind me to, to buy some more bags then. <laughs> it's a good. I'm gonna say it's it's a good strategy. Yeah. You should put lots of things in there, like all your sling stones in separate bags. Your sword, put it way down inaccessible, hard to get to, so no one can take it off your belt. Things like that. I was wondering why there was a shortage of bags at the, uh, at the <laughs> general store. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, Alvaro, Alvaro, Alvaro has been rules. hard holding them, <laughs> and there aren't like any like manacles at the general store either. <laughs> so after you uh, seeing um, Rock Me Amadeus, uh, he comes over, uh, drink in hand, and he says, El Assad, I we've talked about this. You know, I'd rather <laughs> you didn't didn't sing that song." I know you want to keep a low profile, but you're such an amazing man. And, and Day's it's... not the day. What's the matter? Day's not the day. I lost another one. Oh. Um, and Elisard, since you've kind of been hanging out here, if you mm. want to give me a history, you can kind of know what he's talking about. Yes. Oh, yeah, 19. Yeah, so um, people have been dying in town um, of a, a plague that you've heard of um, since you've come to, to the material plane, um, but you haven't uh, seen in person until these people, like it was one of those myth mythic things. Nobody ever actually died of it, um, but the numbers seem to be ramping up. Um, and it's just this um, sickness uh, where people get like, black rings around their eyes their lips kind of turn blue and black and their fingertips turn black and they die um and generally the common folk generally call it the shadow or the shadow sickness or the black sickness and stuff like that oh well you know maybe this is something a little bit more serious that, that my uh, crew and i should look into because it sounds like it's something that maybe because, you know, this town's been through so much. And, you know, we have, just a few months ago, we thought it was just a natural thing. But this sounds like it might be some kind of a new thing that has inflicted uh, our town. Maybe it was something we should check into. Isa, give me a history. history. As well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, that is one of my skills. Fifteen. Yeah, it's not just here. It's it because uh, you're the person that's been leaving the most often, and in other cities, um, whereas it used to be like one person every like ten or twenty years would die from the sickness. Now it's come up to like one person every couple months, or a, cu a couple of people every couple months. It's it's not like pandemic scary yet, but it's mm -hmm. enough to be concerning. Yeah, yeah, huh. but I uh, say so I've been I've been hearing things from a. Uh... You know, as I've been traveling about and uh, tithering here and there, and from what it sounds, I mean, it's not almost common of ailments, but it's it's definitely starting to uh, look a little more bleak. And I roll the coin you know, between my fingers, you know, might, might be something that may be, you know, well, I don't know, magically based physician might want to, um, help out with. Right. Um, Alvaro, your turn. History check. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I, let's see. Don't have any skills in history, but I do listen a lot. I roll the natural 15. Well, it's your personal history. So, uh, of course oh. you remember. Of course I remember that. Yeah. So um, you're kind of, as you're listening to Amadeus and Elisard and Isa kind of describe the black fingers and the black lips, the black rings around the oh. eyes, um, you're kind of overwhelmed with this feeling that you know what they're talking about and this feeling that, like, 
you know that feeling when you convince yourself of something even though you know it's not true and then all of a sudden you're like oh i have to face this thing because it's definitely true now that's kind of the feeling that you get kind of in your stomach um so as a young boy alvaro found himself on the streets orphaned and alone and with no memory of why he was there an older boy peter who seemed to be the leader of the group um of the of a group of orphans told him the story of what happened told Alvaro the story of what happened to Alvaro's parents. Um, but it never seemed real um, to Alvaro, just a story. But hearing Amadeus describe what's happening, the story begins to feel real. The boys thought Alvaro's home was vacant. Nobody had entered or left in almost a week. No chimney smoke, no footsteps in the snow outside. And this, of course, uh, you were living in Grace, is where you were. Um, so they broke in to look for food or at least a place to sleep out of the wind and snow. And they found little Alvaro huddled and scared under the bed. It seemed that he had heard the boys breaking in. At the time, Peter told Alvaro that his parents were taken away by a shadow, like all the other, like all the other boys. But as Amadeus describes these victims, Alvaro remembers his parents showing the same signs, the black fingertips, the rings around the eyes and mouth, and wonders if they met the same fate as Amadeus's parishioners. So um, that's kind of the feeling that you kind of get and you remember um, this little bit of your past. Um, and so it's like a sad, it's a sad thing, unfortunately. He's very quiet and just like in, in the cup has actually laid his cards down, like accidentally face up, you know, he just mm. doesn't say anything yet. Others uh, might notice it. As my, well, as my passive inside is 19, uh, I immediately say, Alvaro, you, you seem to be, uh, I'm sensing some kind of disturbance in you. There's something, there's something bothering you. Yeah, it's probably all that dumb music you've been playing, you get just uh, leave people see, alone. Now, now I know, now I know you, you're, you're deflecting here. There's something wrong and, and you've got to come out with it. Because you know, otherwise it's going to boil up inside you and give you heartburn. I mean, look what? at your cards. It looks like you're winning. You have five aces. What? <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> Stands up in the chair. <laughs> Hops down, you know. <laughs> Oi, mate, don't you get all barbarian-ish on me. Why is it? I'll freeze, you right, I'll freeze your feet right to the floor. Why is that guy telling stories about death fingers and, you know, raccoon eyes and stuff? Just things you tell you to scare little kids. Have you got some kind of uh, history with this shadow sickness? I've never. It's just, you know, like people, they, I don't know. The people say they die that way. It's dumb. Do you know someone who's died this way? I never knew them. I mean, I don't know. They used to say it was my mom and my dad. <laughs> Oh. oh, all right. So I go give Alvaro a hug. I say, it's all right. It's all right. Don't give him the hug. I try to escape the grapple. <laughs> <laughs> Come here now. <laughs> oh, God, it's even worse. There's two of them. I start the rocking part. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And we start, and we start <gasps> singing, nothing's going to dice... harm you, not while I'm around. <laughs> My dice knew what you were gonna do. Natural one. <laughs> he just collapses. He's oh. all no no resistance whatsoever. Alvaro's just like, and then they said they found me all alone. I don't remember, but you know, I can see these images of just like blackened fingers and their eyes, and it was, you know, like I why do people have to remember these things? He just completely loses it. Uh, see, I knew it. It was gonna all come flood, flooding back, and and that's all right. That's all right. Look, we've made a breakthrough here, Alvaro. I, I'm I'm really really proud of you. I'm 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 so excited about the movement we've made in in, in you right now. You were such a gruff person when we met back in uh, Yule Tide era time period. Alvaro, see what you don't know about Elisard is as a you know very you know quasi immortal being. He has a lot of time on his hands, and um, <laughs> he got a PhD in psychology. Um, <laughs> he's a licensed therapist. I am. That's right. <laughs> Alvaro, it's yeah. not your fault. What? No, I... it's not your fault. Well, I didn't get sick. It's not your fault. <laughs> All right. Why would it come here, though? It's just maybe we can kill it. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Um, 
Amadeus, was there any kind of connection between any of the victims? As far as I'm, whether they knew each other, but also uh, race, um, even hair color or eye color, any kind of connection between any of them? Not that we've been able to discern. Um, I mean, Sheridan kept to himself mostly. Um, people mostly thought he was crazy. So there's that. Um, I mean, nothing. No, no, no long, long moonlit walks, you know, out by the old swamp or anything. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, at least. Was <laughs> I following Sheridan in his final days? No. Well, I'm, I'm sure. Have you been through, have you done a, a thorough investigation as far as, um, uh, you know, looking into his home, uh, where he where he traveled to, maybe even if he stayed at home, if there was. As far as uh, we can tell, I've had you know some of my clerics out and about and making notes. The three victims we've had this year were not connected by any race or work or um, locations where they lived, ate, slept, visited. They were completely unrelated. Um, hmm. And as far as I can tell from the messages I've been getting from other towns, they kind of have similar stories. It doesn't seem just as far as we can tell, we can't find the connections. Okay. Just comes in, it's it's a few few blokes, and then you don't see it again it, for a while. It's a it's a slow thing, you know. It used to just be maybe one person every few years. Um, now we're getting like one person every few weeks, um, which is concerning. Right. Um, but they we. It's in a person long before they know it's in them. Um, they'll, yeah, I understand, Alvaro. That's it's kind of one of the first things they'll notice that the the fingers are what turn first. They'll lose a little bit of feeling in the in the fingertips, and um, those will turn, and um, then the facial features will change, and um, but the but like final a... days they become almost incoherent. <laughs> How long does it last once you notice your fingers have turned? Well, a lot of people, mm, nah, understandably so, hide the fact that they've got these symptoms until they're mostly incoherent. Um, best I can tell, somewhere in the range of a uh, fortnight or two. Oh, okay. About to say, sounds like a, sounds like a slowed down frostbite. Except I just the fingers, not the toes. The toes are fine. Toes, you would expect the toes. Fine. Oh, toes are fine. Doesn't go for the toes. No. Fascinating. And skips their nose completely. Just goes right for the eyes. They don't want the. They don't want the toes. They don't want the nose. No toes. No nose. <laughs> you would think the toes with nose and the nose and the nose and the toes. The, hmm. You know, it's it's something completely different that goes for the nose. So. Right. <laughs> okay. So. Uh... Well, has, should we go investigate maybe Sheridan's house or? I mean, you know, well, I mean, it's something to do, but, you know, we're also supposed to be waiting for Roger. True. And while True. you're saying this, Hathor comes by with a bunch of keys and she says, I know um, Roger's not here yet. I'm sorry, but um, he said these are on him. So there you go. And she gives you guys keys to four rooms. So you have some rooms for the night. Um, if you want them. And the uh, tab too, right? He mentioned that. So, I believe the deal was if you solve the town's problems that you guys would have free tab. Do you not remember right. that part of the deal? I I remember that now. <laughs> it's, well, you're considering you've been taking advantage of it for the past four months. That, yes, I would say that that's you That's why I couldn't well. remember because yeah. I'd been taking advantage of it. <laughs> and by the way, it's okay if we get up and leave and Roger shows up because doesn't he come to where the coins are and he holds up a coin with an A scratched into the top of it? Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's why I'm not going to let you hug me anymore. Give me that. It was on the <laughs> table and he knocked it on the floor. And... Likely story. Well, then. What time Dang. of day is it? Should we go check out her 
scary it's probably house. Probably somewhere in the like early evening, five, six, seven o'clock, somewhere in there. No, oh, I'm just getting started. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get Isis some coffee. She's ready to go all night. Uh, so, well, I'd say we just, why don't we hang around here for a bit and see if Roger shows up. <laughs> First, you're all gung-ho to go to the scary, creepy, shadow what? sickness house. Now uh, you're all gung-ho to sit here on your bum and wait around. We're supposed to wait for Roger. What is it with you? I don't know. We're supposed to wait for Roger. That's what I'm told. So Tadari is going to whisper over to Isa. He's boring now. <laughs> <laughs> now. I'm good with whatever you guys do because you, uh, you know, the, 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 we got the band back together. Let's go do something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's 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 go to the creepy the creepy shadow sickness house. All right. That's the spirit. Wait, There's the spirit. Away. I don't want to see any spirits. <laughs> that's why we got. That's why we got a Safari. You know, he's a he's a spirit detector. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Alvaro's always got spirits on him. Oh yeah. It's Joe. You do. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Exactly like that. <laughs> the other sort of spirit Safari. The fun <laughs> kind. We've talked about oh, this, right? Yeah. Let's go check out the house. I'll stand guard outside while you guys look in. All Sounds right. fair. And if we run, if we run into trouble, we'll scream real loud so that way you know to run away. I, yeah. Yes. Uh, to get, to get help. <laughs> you right. guys would remember that Sheridan, the orc, lives on Bright, Bright Hawk Street. Wait, was he the one who was like the crazy conspiracy thing? Oh, <laughs> oh, what a pity. <laughs> Okay. Really Sam, awesome. the world has lost one of the greats. <laughs> a conspiracy theorist. Yeah? Um, Maybe so... he stumbled across something in all the conspiracy. And that's that... true. That's And where we can find that out of his house. I, think, I know. I think you're onto something, Alvaro. <laughs> it's always the loons. And I glance over at Sathari. Um, so you come into Bright Hawk Street, which is like a little, it's got the well in the middle that you guys jump down, and then it's got the, um, like the houses kind of around it. Um, and, um, but you don't know which house is his. Um, good news for you is that Fallon, the, essentially the leader of the neighborhood watch, for lack of a better term. I, um, oh, that guy gets on my night. nerves. Is out and about. <laughs> Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Um, and so, you know, he recognizes you guys. Um, he is a human man, of course, um, who's just a human man, just trying to get by. Just <laughs> slipping his nose. Oh, boy. All right. Um, what, his name is Fallon? Fallon, like Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Right. <laughs> um, who wave? at you guys um and i guess continue doing oh, whatever it is he's fallon. doing oh, oh fallon can I, can I grab you for a moment um oh, God. Uh, just uh <laughs> it's good to see you uh fallon uh, love the work you do on late night um <laughs> oh it's, it's nice to have we need to have you on again that's right uh listen uh, uh we're looking for uh, this is his day job. house we know it's this neighborhood but oh. uh, yeah we're investigating his passing it's right sad that he died, you know? He was uh, really, he, he he was taken from us too soon. Yeah, um, yeah uh, uh, Sheridan lived over in uh, 223 and a half uh, over there. There's a door in that alley, I think, next to the manhole. Okay, uh, well, uh, have you seen, yeah, how long have you been... Are you on every night as far as this watching the that's going on in the neighborhood? No, I have to sleep, my dude. No, 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 I, I know that. I thought maybe you, you like, watch yeah, no, no. to the dark um, ones and you can fix that. I mean, what? Uh, as far as you know, me and the like, you, this is a pretty nice neighborhood. Yeah. Um, we don't really need to patrol. Uh, Sheridan was really the sketchiest part of the whole neighborhood, so. Right. 
<laughs> well, did, was there any talk about uh, about Sheridan about any kind of his activities or? Yeah, he was there? crazy. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah, he was fantastic. I loved him. Um, but I'm wondering if there was anything suspicious that he would do outside of him just being. You know, any yeah. see the any problem thing... is he's suspicious all the time, so it's hard to single out suspicious behavior. Right, any right. anything that was unusual, even for him. No, just really overall. Any um, any weird changes about you know the any any sudden changes in life. I mean, recently he was on a kick trying to prove that the queens are actually sisters and not married. But I mean, that was fine. I that's not true. That's not true. We, they, well, we have we have documentation. We, sure. Yeah, that's right. We, yeah. we met. It's, and, you know. And, and even if it is, I mean, who cares? But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, they, they, they can do their own thing. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> but what, what did, was he ever going out? Did he ever go out uh, to travel? Did he go out the, to, in out of the city for any reason? Well, I mean, before, so um, it would have been about midwinter-ish he left for a little while and he came back really freaked out that the this guy this thing and the couple towns over was going to take over the world and it was going to be really bad but then that didn't happen and so everybody's like ah sheridan you're really crazy and dumb and nothing comes true that was about the last time he traveled other than that he mostly just stays in his apartment all right well we're gonna go check out his uh place if you hear of anything uh you know where to find us uh you can always find us, you know, over at Half Holes. We're usually just hanging out. But do you, if you hear of anything. Do you, do you guys have, like, you're just going to break into his apartment? Well, he's dead. He's not going to notice. <laughs> uh, I mean, his belongings belong to somebody. Supposedly, his sister's going to come clean that First up. Say, I we, mean, I we, just, we discussed who his next like, to you kid is. just tell the, the leader of the neighborhood watch, we're going to go break into this dwelling well, that we... <laughs> We're not going to break in. We're, we're going to actually. We're going to walk in the door. So okay, we're not going to break. We're not going to break anything. I promise. Which about that time, Elizard might look around and Alvaro is bent down at a door doing something. <laughs> it may not be the right door, but he's at a door and. You know what? It's my day off. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> Well, and yeah. we're not, I mean, we're not, you know, worst, worst, worst comes not... to worst. I go, look, a distraction, and I cast hypnotic pattern. Nope, he <laughs> just leaves. He really doesn't want to be a part of this. Uh, right? Okay. Well, you um... saw nothing. You heard nothing. We're just yeah. asking some questions. Don't worry about thank, it. Thank, thank you for your time, Fallon. Um, more anyway. neutral good before than he. Good. That's nice. Before he leaves, I want to just jump in front of him and shake his hand and say thank you for your help. You're welcome. And, and then I'm going to turn his hand over and look at his fingers. They're finger colored. He's clear. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, this, I can imagine it's the tie time. Alvaro's constantly every now and then he goes, okay. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm doing now. I got to keep him nimble. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So let's go oh, yeah. check I'm out. I'm just going to say, you guys break in. It's not a hard luck. You've got Alvaro the Rogue, and then you've got, you know. This giant a hammer. You could, yeah, you just. <laughs> Ding dong. Um, you get in his department. His apartment is dusty and dirty. Um, there's books everywhere. There's a bulletin board with lots of red string. Um, <laughs> there is absolutely nothing of value in here at all. It's just like it's knowledge. Um, the most interesting thing maybe you can see if you want to give me a uh, investigation. Oh no, that's five. I I am um, I found it. I saw a mirror. You found a picture of yourself I, I uh, on the board tell, with tell, the tell, tell, red string. I just oh my god, I'm a gorgeous, gorgeous man. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Uh, natural 20 for investigation. <gasps> oh, there you go. Okay, so Isa finds a couple of um, old, old books. Um, and they're all written in different languages. What languages do you speak, Isa? Oh. Oh. Um, let me see here. Everybody should go ahead and look up their languages if you don't just know them. Yeah. Let's see. I, I can I can do common and infernal. 
One of the books is definitely an Infernal. And I've got Abyssal, Celestial, and Elvish. And one of them is definitely in Celestial. One is definitely in Elvish. If they would wrote a thing, oh, go. There go would be, definitely be one in Sylvan as well. Yeah. And if anyone wrote a thing in Avelyn or Thieves Can't. I'm yeah, no. <laughs> well, Thieves Can't's a, a hand signal it's thing, a, so I don't know. Yeah, as far as you know. It's like a sign language um, so manual, you know. There's one in common, there's one in Infernal, one in Celestial, one in Elvish. There, And then there's a couple in some languages you don't recognize. But between mm -hmm. the three of you, you can kind of look through, and they seem to um, be creation stories. Um, so stories about how the material plane came to be. Um, and as you're looking at the story in Celestial, Sathari, you get a little bit of a flashback. Woo. So as a young boy, um, you know, you dun, 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 were dun, dun, you dun, dun. were aware that you were different than the rest of your family, yeah? Flashback time. And, uh, you know, as a young child who understands that they're different, kind of, you know, ask their parents, what is, why am I different? What is the meaning of the world? Why, how did the world come to be and all of that good stuff? Um, and you remember your mom telling you a story. And I'm going to read it. And I have her um, accent written down. Here's your word of the day. Mellifluous. Mellifluous. Mellifluous um, means sweet and soothing. So a woman or a man could have a mellifluous singing voice. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember sitting on your mother's lap and you could smell um, lavender. She always smelled like lavender. Okay, all right. <laughs> a long time ago, shadow and light were a singularity, and together they created the material plane. They created the mountains and the valleys, the lakes and oceans, the desert and the plain. They were happy for a time, marveling at their creation, but the time came when they felt that something was missing. So they created creatures to populate their beautiful land. They made the wasp and the butterfly, the wolf and the hare, the lion and the lamb, and these creatures pleased the pair. They looked out over their masterpiece, proud of their work, and they both seemed happy. But in the dark of night, Shadow began making monsters, dark creatures of great power who only knew the world of tooth and claw, death and destruction, who killed not to fill their bellies or slake their thirst, but because they enjoyed killing. Light, seeing these monsters decimating the land, knew the plane would be destroyed if he did nothing, so he created his own creatures, humans and their variants. These creatures were able to hold the monsters at bay, and the two found themselves at an impasse. Neither light nor shadow could gain the upper hand, and it remained this way for 10,000 years. But shadow plotted in the darkness and traveled the world in search of power, which would help him seize enough power to thwart the light and control the plane. He found the onyx gem, the ebony staff, the obsidian blade, and the veil of shadows. He weaponized these dark and powerful artifacts, finally gaining an upper hand on light. He reached out with his hand and brought darkness to the world. His monsters grew more powerful, beating back the captors and protectors of the beings of light. Light had no choice. He blessed the ancient heroes, and spread the dragon heart, Jinnahin the Daring, Reynald the Gentle, and Reginaldus the Devoted, and sent them into battle against the Shadow and his armies of death and darkness. The battle was fierce. Jinnahin was the first to fall, her sword and dagger flung far from her grip by the countless dark soldiers. Then Reginaldus fell, his cry to light so anguished that from his heart came a searing burst of light that left only the Shadow standing. Ansfried mourning the loss of her friends and determined to save the plane, ran headlong into Shadow. The battle cry from her throat could be heard for miles. Shadow lowered his great hand and held her inside, and when Shadow released Ainsfred, her eyes were bottomless black pools of darkness, and she ran toward Reynold. Reynold the Gentle refused to raise a hand to his friend Ansfried, dodging around her blows as Shadow laughed. He stepped back and let Ainsfried pierce his heart, tears on his cheek. As the air rushed from his lungs, his final words were, 
It's all right, Ainsfried. I loved you and our friends dearly. Your heart is strong and you will end the shadow. And as he fell, Ainsfried's eyes began to clear and she could feel the shadow in her heart. She took the dagger from her waist and pierced her own heart, piercing the heart of the shadow who exploded with light. In shadow's place was a man who looked almost human, surrounded by his artifacts, dulled with defeat. Light used the last of his the last vestiges of his power to lock Shadow in a deep, deep prison and hide the artifacts across the land so that even if Shadow escaped, he would have no hope of regaining power again. So all of these creation stories tell a variant of that story, you know, slightly different between the, the variants. Um, but Sheridan seems determined to figure out how these... Um, cultures who were so widely separated for thousands of years have such similar creation stories. That seems to be what he was trying to research and connect um, when he died. Okay. Very, very Campbellian. Hmm. <laughs> so Thyla um, and Alvaro is muted. I don't know if they're aware. So, um, so Thyla will come out of this memory um, wings have slowly fully extended and rose up and the smell of not lavender but conspiracy theory orc now <laughs> lingers in his nostrils and he'll sigh and and relax and uh knows that elisard can read this language also and hands the book to him and shakes his head and says we're, we're all different, but we've all come from the same place. Right. And you guys all would have gotten a similar story in childhood um, and known of what are called the ancient heroes or the great heroes um, and how they beat the shadow and um, locked it away and that kind of stuff. And Freed, one of the bravest athletes in the world, she was. You know, I don't have the races written on here. Maybe she was a halfling. <laughs> Didn't write it down. I mean, you know, that's that's part of the story, right? That's part of the history <laughs> of, you know, who who was what. You oh, know. They were, yeah, they were all fae. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's you right. know, you 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 boys you boys are right right lucky. You know, your your heroes always get to be halflings or or fae creatures or even angels. Yeah. And then there's me. Just me. Yeah, but you get to be your own hero, I said. Yeah, yeah, I get to be my own hero. But, you know, growing up looking like this, yeah. you know, not too many, not too many people be understanding if you catch my yeah. drift. You and know about what? This time, it's yeah. time for a hug. <laughs> no, 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 not again. <laughs> but I, no. The light and the darkness. The light and the darkness. <laughs> About this time, the it starts to get really dark in this room um, <laughs> because the sun has gone down, um, or at least behind the buildings across the street, and so um, it you can't really see that much anymore, unless you're gonna like light something or leave. But you guys have found you've sussed it out. You like, yeah. you know what I mean. Isa, oh, is this your favorite part of the day? Oh well, yeah, lots I of sneaking it. around can be done after nightfall. I knew, I knew it. Fewer, fewer, Things fewer shine people. brightest in the dark. Fewer, fewer people be staring at you. You know, no, you touch you, me. You shine brightest in the dark, my you friend. You touch me, mate. I blast you. <laughs> Okay, so I assume you guys go back to the inn at some point in time right. Um, right. and presumably have a few drinks with Hathor and have a good time and end up going um, at least into your rooms, even if you're not necessarily going to go to bed because we know yeah. Isa doesn't sleep. I um, was a little disgruntled as he sits down. I mean, like, we broke in there and there was nothing. There's nothing of value in there whatsoever. I mean, it's just a crazy loon. We didn't break oh, anything. Uh, we didn't break in. We just walked in. We the visited. dead. <laughs> like friends. I mean, it's, it's not like he's going to come back and want his stuff. He's gone, mate. Alvaro's suddenly troubled. He can't remember if he locked the door back again. I've never done that before. <laughs> 
I should go back and check again. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, mate. Just, just come here. Come here and drink with me. Um. So after you guys kind of go to bed, yeah. um, those of you who sleep, um, can Here, he's I like, get? Please go to bed. Please go to bed. <laughs> well, it's already one o'clock. Loudest um, snore right here. Loudest snore. Um, Isa and Elisard, I need perception checks at about 4 a.m. All right. So, Elisard, I don't know if you trace the first half of the night or the second half of the night, but... Oh, I usually probably do it the first half. Let's, let's say first half. Yeah, it's pop. Fifth, four, uh, 15. 17. Okay, so you both are kind of here. Um, you can hear people talking downstairs. You can't tell what they're saying. You can just hear that. Um, and it's not like Hathor closed the bar up hours ago, so it's not like customers. Alvaro and Safari are asleep. <laughs> I'm going to be a curious kitten. And, mm -hmm. uh, I figured you probably would. <laughs> try to uh, sneak my way so I can actually hear what's going on. I need yeah. a stealth roll from anyone who's going to investigate. Yeah. I'm going to go investigate. Uh, sneaky, sneaky, stealth, sneaky. I'm actually better than stealth. Uh, oh, but that's only a 10. Hold on, I'm just making sure I don't have anything that will help me in this situation. Ooh. Do it. Uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to cast invisibility. No. <laughs> okay on myself um and actually because technically i cast it at a, at a fifth level spell slot being a warlock mm -hmm. so i somewhat imagine that maybe elisada you sneaking out you trying yeah, to sneak I'm, out I'm, as well? yeah i think you i think you and i have heard something and we both kind of you just we both kind of like look outside of our doors about the same time and i said i said you heard that right okay i'm just gonna lay my hand on your shoulder and we both. So then you can roll with advantage. Out of sight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Elisard, you can roll again. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's not better. 18. Okay, so you're sneaking down the stairs, and when you get towards the bottom, Elisard steps on a creaky one, and you guys kind of, like, freeze. <laughs> But they don't seem to notice, so you you can um, at least creep close enough down at the bottom of the stairs to kind of hear the conversation. And it seems that Hathor's talking to somebody. They got here hours ago. I assured them you wouldn't miss their meeting, but I wasn't so sure. Where were you? Well, I was investigating a rumor or two, and you recognize this voice as the physician. Well, which rumors? There are, that there are a group of dark beings who are working to restore Shadow to what they believe is his proper state. It seems they are, and they've been scouring the land looking for dark artifacts. Um, Hathor um, curses in um, Celestial, so LSR, so you hear her just, you know, nice string of curse words there. Have they found any of them? They didn't seem to know any of them all except for the Onyx gem. If they know where that is, why haven't they snatched it yet? It seems that the great battle was fought around the time that Titania and Oberon got married. Light gave Titania the Onyx gem as a wedding present, and as far as they can tell, she still has it in the Feywild. Unfortunately for them, they currently have no ability to get to the Feywild nor defeat mighty Titania and her deadly mate Oberon. Well, at least there's that. My best chance is to win the Midsummer Tournament. If you win the tournament, you can ask one thing of Titania. Easy enough, you're pretty powerful. Except she won't let me compete. Not after what happened at her Lupercalia festival a century or so ago. Let's just say it doesn't catch me in the best light. So then how are you? Wait, they're just people. They're just normal people. You can't send the normal people. <laughs> they don't stand a chance against the Fang that are gonna participate in that tournament. You know that. The ancient heroes were just people, and look what they did. Now, don't worry, they'll be fine. I'm mostly sure of it. You go on to bed, I'll clean up around here. While you were out and about, did you hear anything about... No, I'm sorry, love. No, I had no hair of him, but I'm sure he's fine. Your brother's powerful being himself. Now, off to bed. I mean it. 
Um, so normal people, he says. <laughs> Uh, and then Just you hear people these um, days. like Hathor's footsteps kind of approaching. I like press uh, myself up against the wall. Yes. Yeah, if you don't move, then she just walks past you and heads off to bed. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, is the doctor still just sitting at the table? Um, so he seems to be in the back room, and you can kind of hear clinking and what sounds cleaning sounds coming from the back room. Okay. Um, Isa. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. You're still there. I couldn't tell you were invisible. Um, so. No, mate. I was just gonna leave you on your own, and you know, hope it, hope it all turned out well. Oh, you know, I'll, yeah. Maybe, maybe you could have gone. You know, maybe you went to the bathroom. I don't know. Um, what, should we go talk to the to Roger now? Sounds fun. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's uh, let's try to scare him. Yeah. That'd be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right. now, now so you're think. Now you're thinking yeah. like a tiefling. Yeah. So we're gonna. Oh well. You know, I, I am Fay. So it's you know, it's chaos is fun anyway. Um. So we're gonna sneak in to his room. Uh, uh, to I need yeah. another stealth check. Um. You're gonna have disadvantage, so you're just gonna roll straight. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's a very oh. powerful being. Seventeen. <laughs> okay. Modified twenty. Okay, great. Um, so you kind of sneak up behind him and you can see him. He's cleaning and all the stuff like that. And then you can see him say, oh, hello, hello, Sard. How are you today? <laughs> oh, you, you caught me. I was going to start singing, doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case. So what's going on? You know, just a little like cleaning. All right. Um, okay. So I know you can't see me right now. I'm looking really fabulous, but... Um, uh, you know, you, we heard you talking uh, to Hathor uh, about um, this uh, tournament uh, and uh, and the dark and the shadow. You know, we've had some problems here. There's been some people who've been dying of uh, the shadow sickness. Oh, that's quite interesting. Yes. And so we think it might be something that's going on with what you were talking about with uh, some champions of the shadow trying to find some of the... Uh, Things like the Onyx Gym. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Oh, no, we heard the whole conversation, really. I have no idea what you're talking about. Right, okay. <laughs> um, well, if you can really see my face right now, it's really <laughs> shocking. Uh, uh, and, so... I, and, I, and I thought he was supposed to be better than Krampus. Um, oh, that's... hello, Isa. I knew he couldn't make himself invisible on his own. I figured you were a part of this somewhere. That's, that's, that's about the same, that's about the same sort of answers I get whenever I go, whenever I go talk to, um, talk to Crump, talk to old Krampus. Oh, that's quite interesting. Likes his deflections, he does. You know, that whole, oh, yeah, I want you to do a thing, but I'm not really going to tell you I want you to do the thing. I'm just going to heavily imply that you're going to do the thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, well, first <laughs> off, uh, maybe, uh, Isa, can you make us, like, not invisible anymore? Because this is uh, Oh, yeah, really of course. Weird. All right. Um, so... You were the one who told us to be here at this time. Yes, of course. Because oh, well, I have we'll... a task for you. All right. So, oh, well, should we get the rest of the group? I really think it would just, it just would go so much better over breakfast. So... Hey, it's close enough. It's like, what, four o'clock in the morning? For me, that's breakfast. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go break that <laughs> safari? Do you want to go wake him up? Because he sounds I'll do like it. he's, <laughs> yeah, he sounds like he's sleeping quite well. That's fine, I'll be right. I would be a touch rude, Isa. What? Rude? The men's, Me? had, a, the men's had a flashback filled day. <laughs> he needs some time to emotionally recover. Both of them do. So why don't you two just go back on upstairs, twiddle your thumbs for a couple of hours, and then come back down for breakfast? It feels like you're trying to insight check. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Go for it. Well played. Good his job. Fingertip, check his fingertips. <laughs> uh, 
19. He's definitely being dodgy. Yeah, that's how I figured. I just want to make sure. Because, uh, but... Well, well, no, no, it's, it's, it's fine, Elisad. I mean, you know, you and me, you know, those of us who don't need sleep. Uh, let's just go play a couple rounds of cards. It'll be fine. And as you guys uh, kind of, like, leave the room, he starts kind of just pointing around the room and different, like, like a bag of flour comes out and starts like dancing around and then like some <laughs> butter comes out and starts nice. dancing around um Show like off. uh like merlin in yes. the <laughs> sword in the stone right 100 percent saw it um and it looks like he's gonna make breakfast maybe <laughs> i will press to digitate the salt <laughs> and wait <laughs> yes for the opportune moment to add. Don't ruin everybody's breakfast. Just uh, add. I, I'm not ruining it. I'm just making it a little extra salty. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't worry about it. It's fine. So the morning, the sun comes up. You guys go downstairs and it smells fantastic. Um, there's a big basket of muffins on the table. There's whatever, you know, breakfast beverages, mimosas, or just orange juice, or water, or whatever you want for breakfast. It's all there. And the physician is just sitting at the table, waiting. Right. I when he show up. Last night. Last night? Yeah, we heard him talking to Hathor about something about the shadows and the light. So some of the stuff we were looking at last night, and I think it has something to do with the shadow sickness. And well, did uh, you dream the, that part? You know, sometimes when you read a really good book, then you dream about it. True. No. No. I mean, no. I, so and it has if, something to do if, with the tournament. Uh, Queen if that was the case, Alvaro, then uh, Elisard and I would be having the same dream. That'd be really weird. Yeah. That would be weird. But especially since you don't sleep, it would be really hard for no, you. No, I don't. It's yeah. Great. Uh, so yeah, that, that book I gave you talked about the light and the darkness and the creation of, of, uh, no, my mom told me a story once about, uh, light and darkness and an onyx gem and a sword. And he was talking about this stuff. You're right. Well, apparently the... I'm sure he's going to talk about this in a moment, but apparently the forces of shadow are trying to get these artifacts that we had read about last night. There's something about, again, the apparently they only know about the location of the Onyx gym, but with the other ones they don't know, the sword and all the other ones they don't know. But it uh, seems like um, we might be able to, uh, you know, if we could win... Uh, Queen Titania's tournament, maybe we could get the information we need. It would be a lot fate, easier uh, for you guys to just come sit at the table and let right. me explain yeah, what's going true. on instead yeah, of lurking true. around shadows. Yeah, that's true. So I don't get Roger, food. Roger, seriously, mate. You've known us for uh, not quite half a year now. Do we ever yet, pick the it easiest seems thing? like ages. But seriously though, do we do we ever pick the easy way? <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, there's some muffins. Um get some, some sausage and I'm gonna get some oh, eggs yeah. and I'm gonna get uh some of those muffins and um I said could you pass me the salt? Of course, mate. And I press to digitate it over. So, right, I've called you here at this very specific time because I need you to do a very specific task for me. Right. I'm starting tonight, Titania in the Fae Wild is going to host her Midsummer Tournament. And the Midsummer Tournament is pretty great um, in the Fae Wild, Elisad, I'm sure you're aware of it. Um, yes. Aladrin go and they prove themselves um, or they go and just participate for kicks or because they're bored. Um, it's mostly Aladrin participants. You guys are definitely going to stick out a bit, but I'm hoping that Elisard's, um, like, as part of your group, will mm -hmm. kind of, you know, tone you. You got yeah. it in? Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so 
Oh, I it's agree. a real thing. The the, yeah. the, the fate, it's a real thing. Oh, no. oh, yes, of course. Okay, so, Alvaro, you know how there's this world and the one on which right. we exist? Well, right what? next to it is another world. What? Almost exactly like ours, but entirely different. And in this other world, um, there's all kinds of things um and the main governing body of that entire plane is the summer court and that's where titania and oberon live um and they are hosting this tournament Wait, it's different every year Alvaro, um, where did you think i came from well you know like i mean i don't know like you know from people the sky like, i suppose yeah i, I, mean, I come from the feywild and and I, i'm not native here so you're telling me that the world is like a house and inside the house there are many mansions? Is that what you're telling me? Well, sort of. Uh, like, imagine it though, like... The More UK's like, like you know in... how when you stack a bunch of plates together? Right. Right. You're on one plate. Feywild, where Elisar is from, it's a different plate. It's like right up next to it, but it's not the same. Is imagine... that why things are so small? Because we've only got that much room? Imagine you're inside sure. of a bag and someone put that bag in inside another bag, another bag and then that bag exactly. was in another bag and then everyone lived in a different bag but all the bags were inside together. What? Exactly. Yeah. Like, we don't, like we a sense, bubble sorry. inside of another bubble. Anyway, here's the important part. And then we when put that, you... we put them in a box. We put that box in a bigger it's box and we box. mail that box to ourselves. To ourselves. When it arrives. Elephants. <laughs> elephants all the way down. Okay, so here's the important part. Right. Why are the when... parts are pretty important? <laughs> when you win the tournament, because I'm sure that you will, and if right. you don't, you'll be dead. So when you win the tournament, you will get to ask Titania for one thing. And I need you to ask her for a very specific thing. When you win, Titania will allow you to ask one thing of her. You need to request the wedding present she received from her closest friend. The wedding present she received from her closest friend. Why don't we just steal it? Elisard, <laughs> 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 do you want to tell Alvaro why you can't just steal the onyx gem? I mean, the wedding present from her closest friend. Yeah, you're you're not you, you you don't even know this place existed until five minutes ago, and you're not going to be able to sneak in. I promise. You can't you can't steal from Titania, my love. Yeah. Um, yeah. What we can't we can't oceans we can't oceans eleven this. In no way, shape, or form. It's just it's. I can't oceans eleven it, and I am exceedingly more powerful than all of you put together, so... Oh, Alvaro, Alvaro's now accepted the challenge. He's like, oh, yes, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, well, listen, let's... Q, Al Alvaro, Q Alvaro, mission Alvaro. impossible. Let's let's consider that plan B. We'll, right. put, we'll put a pin in it. Yeah. Uh, B, B, Roger, uh, B, win or die who, part went right by his head. He's all, now it's a challenge. Now it's like, all right, here we go. Get the swords, get the things, get the stuff. Roger, who was uh, Titania's closest friend? Or is that a kind of this, code? It's one of those uh, yeah, nameless, all name, name, all right. many names and no names. I don't have a name. Because... Oh, one of those, one of those great eldritch things from Beyond the Stars. Right. So great and unfathomable that the human mind can't even conceive of it. Right. So, so the gift she received from friend, Cthulhu. All right. The wedding gift she received from her closest friend is just what you will ask for, right. and. <laughs> Gotcha. All right. We'll give it to oh, you. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I'm, I haven't been to the Feywild in a couple of years. Been, you know, traipsing about here on the material plane, and it's going to be great to go back. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I've never had a chance to go to the, I've never had a chance to go to the, the, the tournament before. So, I think that'd be fantastic. So you're going to walk in, and I know that I can just hide like right there, you know, behind your knees. How are the others going to get in? Oh, you'll all be fine. You'll just stick out like sore thumbs. You're, they're not going to, like, kill you on sight. They'll let you participate. They're just likely going to make fun of you a bit. I yeah. mean, you know, that's just Tuesday for me. Exactly. So, no, so no, no problem. Uh, I mean, it's not unusual to have visitors, but... Um, not usually Roger stands up and kind of walks behind the bar. He says, all right, folks, if you'll just follow me, we've got some things to put in order before we go. And um, goes behind the bar and opens the door into the storeroom. Oh, yeah. First, he wants to be all casual, all 
all cheeky, all, you know, here, have your breakfast. And now he's like, all right, mate, let's go. Yeah, all right, okay. Time works different in the Bay Wild. We've got to hop while the iron's hot. Yep. Why are all my characters always, like, leaving the table with a plate of food? We gotta go. <laughs> I mean, crab. You, you're welcome to pocket some muffins. They're quite portable. Say, so I just yeah, no, I know. I like I grab I grab a couple muffins and stick them in my bag, and then I grab one and I just put it in my mouth. Ha <laughs> Is is a beautiful Hathor around? Oh. Um, she actually, as you guys are starting to um, like, the physician has gotten up and walked towards the door. She kind of walks in and she's like, Roger. Uh, that's not her accent. Roger, you made <laughs> you made. Muffins! I love these muffins. You guys definitely want to take some muffins. They're oh, good for later. Some. Yeah, uh, Hathor, I have an idea. Will you put on a pot of your strongest coffee, and when it's done, sit it on the counter and just let it let it get to normal temperature. And then after Joe's had a few tonight, tell him you have a special new beer and pour that into a beer glass. You know that might work. I haven't tried that one yet. Let him have a few first. <laughs> well, I, I yeah. appreciate it. Sorry. <laughs> um, those... Breakfast, second breakfast, eleven days. But take two for the afternoon tea. I'm just not rumbling around, mind. banging on stuff. <laughs> the bottomless basket of muffins, Roger Bates. Um, so we'll just say between you guys, there's a half a dozen muffins. Um, those are good berry muffins. Oh, Yay. Um, so each muffin is 1d4 plus 4 healing for 72 hours. After that, they become useless. It's regular muffins. 1d4 plus 4. Plus four. Oh, plus 4. Yeah, I made it up. I was that's, feeling that's generous nice, when I made it up. Nicely done. I like that's it. Brilliant. Like blueberry muffins, only they're but good berry muffins. Berry and and muffins. So, so one muffin actually fills us up for the entire day? Sure. Yeah. Like the, you're just not, like a good berry? Which yeah. is Have, which is what, listen, Roger, for like, LSR, you would understand this. He doesn't want these material plane folks eating in the Feywild, so he wanted to make sure they were full. Something. And so he felt, he made the muffins, they'd be nice and full all day, and they wouldn't be hungry. Yeah. Some, like some, something something never eat or drink in the lands of the Fey? Uh, no. Something yeah. like that. Be careful where you go. Do not stray off the path. Do not talk to any strange creatures. Oh, uh, one thing but I that's like note, my that's like my own modus operandi. What? <laughs> it's talk talking to strange creatures. That's like my whole thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was everything there is a strange creature to you people. So, uh, I mean, know, I've already yeah. made a deal with someone. My soul's spoken for, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, so are you guys going to walk yes. into the back room? Yeah. Um, so as Roger kind of holds the door open for you and lets you walk ahead of him, um, and as you walk through the door, um, Elsar, you immediately realize this is not a door to the back room. Um, you are now in um, a, a space that feels both inside and outside. Uh, so white ash trees, strong and stately, with their branches intertwining to create a living ceiling, line the throne hall like marble columns, their golden leaves entwining in a ceiling canopy, light filtering through the filigree. Phosphorescent flowers act like lanterns in the climbing vines, emitting a firefly glow. And you recognize that it's also, you went from, like, dawn in the material plane, it is now kind of a just before, like, getting to dusk kind of a time. The throne of the Seelie Court is shaped like a large ice dragon, cold, feral, and glittering. The crowd surrounding it is much the same, draped in jewels and flowers, along with magical baubles. Before the throne stands a man with skin so dark it nearly looks blue as if lit by starlight. Um, leaves frame his face as if they are a golden crown, and a gossamer cape adorns his shoulders, attached to mass matching rings on both his hands. On his head is a plain gold circlet. Excellent! You're just in time for the banquet! I feel a, I feel a mite underdressed. <laughs> so I'm going to use my uh, mask of many faces, which allows me to cast disguise self at will. <laughs> so I'll just make myself look extra fancy. Hmm... Um, and if you guys want to roll a perception check as you kind of walk amongst these people, you might pick up some, um, thing. 19. Natural 20 for 25. Oh, 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 oh. 10. 
Um, okay, so as you pass by, as you pass by, um, Elisard, remind me what kind of a ladron are you? Spring. Spring. Um, so as you walk by, you see um, a little clump of, of um, other ladron, and you can kind of see like one looks at you and gives you like a weird side eye and like goes back and like tries to like whisper to his friends. Um, and he's like, he looks ladron, but oh god, who dressed him this morning? Lard must be a little lost in the head. Yeah, I, I have gone natives. Um, Just a bit, yeah. And then, um, Sathari, as uh, you pass by the same group, you see a different Aladrin um, kind of lean back and say, I don't know, no, no, that one looks... Wings. Looks pretty good. I mean, got the wings in the front and the party in the back. I'm not saying I got, I'm not mad watching him walk away. <laughs> and <laughs> not accordingly. <laughs> um, so friendly here. But the the main gist you get is that they don't see people like you guys very often, and you're definitely like their you know their noses are up. You are below mm. them. Um, um, they're a little I... snooty. I immediately cast prestidigitation to clean myself off, <laughs> and uh, and to because I'm now I'm feeling really self conscious <laughs> about how how much of the material plane I actually have on me right now. <laughs> I'm going to float gently a foot off the ground. Um, you can see um, a couple of the lantern as you guys, as especially as Oliver walk by, kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Alvaro doesn't notice at all. He rolled like a five on his perception check. He's still like looking back and up and forward and back. He's like, there's a door. It just, like, just, it, is it there all the time? He's like kind of walking backwards looking at the uh, the doorway we came in, if it's still there, if it disappears. Completely clueless to his surroundings of people. I have, I have half a mind to just tie some string to Alvaro's wrist <laughs> just to ensure we don't lose him because um, I think so we're dangerously gave, close to losing him Elisard gave us the same dumb rules he gives us in every town stay on the path, stay together da 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 so um, Oberon's face <laughs> doesn't change um, but he does kind of look you up and down um, and then uh, his his eyes kind of light up, and he raises a hand, pointing a finger um, at the um, Aladrin who, at the winter Aladrin who insulted Elisard. And a bolt of black energy streaks across the room and hits the Aladrin in the center of his chest, causing him to stumble and fall to one knee, teeth gritted in pain as they kind of stiffen into place, and Oberon's hand drops. Now, he asked, smile, gro smile growing and his tone still jovial. Would anyone else care to defy the queen? And just crickets, just absolute violence. I thought not. Oberon um, kind of claps the scenes together. Excuse him, that was very rude. And uh, he looks up and down at you again. He was right, though. You are... Inferior? Well, my lord, I am uh, a ladron, and I have actually was born and raised here in the family. Right, but there's, you know, you can, you can be born a dragon raised among pigs, and you're going to act like a pig. I understand that, my lord, and uh, I'm just... But you know what? I'm feeling generous. We're just going to let you all compete together as a group. Four of you together will probably equate one of my subjects. Oh, well, yes. I mean, you know, I, I think Alvaro brings us down a bit, but yes. Um... <laughs> well, yeah, you're definitely from here. <laughs> <laughs> Whose side are you on? <laughs> just as rude as the rest of them. I put, I put my know, hands my on the sides of Alvaro's head, just shh, don't listen to him, love. Uh, my Lord, I, I, I think it, we, we would be honored to be a part of the tournament. I had always heard about the tournament and always wanted to be a part of it. And so this is a, a special thing. And then with my friends, I think that we will make at least a showing. We don't 
there's always a possibility that something could happen, but we just are doing this for He's fun. going to point a finger at Elisard, and Elisard's mouth keeps moving, but you can't hear anything. <laughs> 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 Now, on, uh, on, a, on a superficial level, I can appreciate that. But on a profound level. <laughs> so the tournament um, exists in two parts most of the time. You've got the tournament and you've got the maze. Um, and these are the two parts that you are going to be participating in as a group. Um, if you are named the champion of events, you will gain Titania's favor and be able to ask one thing of her. Um, so on and so forth. And so then he is going to kind of snap his fingers and like the whole wall next to you opens up into like a big eh, coliseum, for lack of a better term, coliseum kind of like raised seating. Um, and you guys are on the um, ground and you see the race seating full of um, all kinds of fey. Um, so you've got a ladron, of course. You've got everybody here. There's um, an Elisard. You would know of the tournament that all fey are welcome to attend the tournament, but no fey is. You can't like. There's no fighting. So like, Fomorians are there, but they're being nice and behaving well. And the stands are just there for the entertainment. There are some pixies um, that are banned from causing mischief and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, it's a big, just like kind of a thing. Um, and as you kind of, there's a big uh, fanfare and you can kind of look up and you can see in the box, Oberon is standing in the box and has his hand kind of raised as Titania enters in from behind. Um, and where Oberon's skin was the dark night, hers is the golden sun. And she's got um, golden hair and a, like a, her, her dress is just like made of living plants. And she's got flowers, and it's very pretty, very summer, very on brand. Um, <laughs> and as you um, as you look at kind of what she's got going on, you also notice um, in a, a necklace around her neck, she has a large black gem um, surrounded by this like kind of gold filigree um, as part of her ensemble. Ensemble. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So in the Twilight Forest Arena, you see denizens of the Feywild, some beautiful, some terrifying, most both. You see elves and others, flitting beings you can only catch out of your peripheral vision. Your competitors surround you, young Eladrin ready to prove themselves. These are Eladrin of all seasons. Um, Titania steps to the front of her people, raised above um, you all. And she says, how will you win? With skill? With truth? With wit? With wager? Or without? These five tasks lie before you, and you must complete them all to continue. So you've got five things. That you, so somebody's going to have to go twice, because uh, there's only four of you. Uh, so you've got um, with skill, with truth, with wit, with wager, or without. So you just kind of let me know who is going to do what whenever you guys well, figure that what's, out. What's the final one? With um, So you've got with truth, without. with skill, with truth, with wit, with wager, or without. Without. Yep, that's all. It's, that's all she said. Without. Hmm. It's okay. Well. All right. Um. Perhaps I could go with with. I could probably go with truth. <laughs> Wager. Wit, wit, wit. And then you guys let me know whenever you're ready to lock stuff in, and I will write it down. I don't like that man called you a pig. I think he's a donkey. Technically, he called him a dragon raised by pigs. <laughs> oh, they called us He pigs. called you a pig. Well, he's still a donkey. I sense donkey here. Um, Alvaro is going to go with I might also skill. be able to do skill. Alvaro right. can also feel the without vibe a little bit in this place, but you maybe, go. you know, okay. either one. Okay, so if I do skill and truth, um, Sathara, you do wit. Yes. And I sell wages and Alvaro without. I think we can make it work. 
it, kind of metagaming here just a little bit, Michael. What is Elisard's highest skill bonus? Rank. Uh, I've got a couple things that I... Uh, let's see. Uh, persuasion is a plus 12. Insight okay. is a plus 9. Deception is a plus 12. Awesome. So he's my got, highest is 11, so yeah. He's got some uh, bodily shenanigans going on. Okay. So who is doing with skill? I am doing with skill. Who's doing with truth? I am. Um, who's doing wit? I'm doing wit. Sorry. Um, Ice is doing wager, and then Alvaro is doing without. Right. Okay. Um, Titania snaps, and a pedal pedestal rises out of the ground before each of the competitors, and then, like, not each of, in front of Elisard and the rest of the Eladrin participating. Um, atop is a small black cube with skill, she yells, and both they and the audience strain to see settling in for the entertainment. So um, once you are ready, Elisard, you just touch the block and then something will happen. I'm going to pat you on the back and say, we believe in you. Guidance. <laughs> oh. All right. And um, I think I also have something that I should be able to do. I do also have kind of a um, yeah. quest. I have a question. Okay. Um, would the time between when I cast invisibility, when me and LSR were sneaking, sneaking around, has it technically been like short rest? You had breakfast. That good berry muffin was real good. <laughs> and um, what, what and is we the, got two uh, spell slots to work with here, guys. Just yeah, yeah, warlock. Um, just going off my my idea of, of history of the tournament is is magic allowed? Is is you know? Yeah, as long as you're not like summoning dragons and stuff, you're fine. Okay, good. Okay, but but as far as helping magic and and yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay good all right great. It's it's the fae. If there's not even a little bit of cheating, um, are you really playing? In which case, um, talking about. I mean, the only people who cheat more are fiends. Uh, skill. Um, I am going to. Yeah, the only thing I'm low on is intelligence. I'm going to cast Fox's Cunning on, or uh, Enhance Ability, Fox's Cunning on myself. Okay. To get advantage on intelligence checks. Rad. What do the other participants kind of look like? Does Do any of them seem, do I get a vibe of them being like ex exceptionally competent, one of these better than another? Uh, I mean, all of these Eladrin um, look better than you guys. <laughs> You really are the underdogs, the ragamuffin team. They look like donkeys. <laughs> so, oh gosh, Elisar, whenever you're ready, you just reach out, pick up that box, and pick it up and go. Okay, so as you pick it up, it actually becomes very heavy, and it drops out of your hands onto the ground. And before you is a one of those like carnival games where you have to like hit it with the hammer real hard. And at the top, it says strong man. At the bottom, it says cry baby. Um, and a large mallet appears in your hand. Um, and I need an athletics check. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Alvaro would like to try to sneak around to one of the other participants. But it has been less than a minute. So I can get this, uh, this guidance, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, that would be 14. It goes kind of up halfway, and then it bounces back to the bottom, and then you hear a baby cry. <laughs> and then it goes, womp, womp, and then it disappears. Okay. Um, so you get the feeling that um, out of these five things, you're not necessarily expected to win every single one, but you need to win a, a majority. Okay. Um, and then the, um, you kind of out of the corner of your eye, you catch that winter legend that said something about you earlier, kind of smirk. Um, yeah. 
and lean over and say something to his friend that you can't hear. Well, if I'd known it was strength, I would have tried something different. Um, that's, the, that's the thing. I could have swung it bigger than that. I know. Oh, well, I thought it was going to be skill, like an actual... Behind the screen, it's whatever is your lowest stat is the one that you get. So uh, all of you that would have been strength except for all for us. Who had a negative in charisma? Who would have had something nice to say to people, like a tea ceremony or something? Um, you would have had to have done a deception, intimidation, performance, a persuasion check. Ah. But anyway, the 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 black box kind of goes back into being a box. And it jumps itself back up on top of the pedestal, and the pedestal lowers back into the ground. Um, around you, you see various levels of success. Aladrin clumsily fiddle with lockpicks, strum lutes, and run obstacle courses falling on their faces. Um, so when everyone is finished with their trials, Titania kind of um, snaps her fingers again, and she says, with truth now. Um, and um, like I said, Titania stands, step forward, pe oh, pedestal rises again. This time, a beautiful golden mirror sits atop it. So Elisard, you're doing this one as well, right? Right. Every pedestal in sight has a mirror, though with varying design, age, and cleanliness. So, Elisar, your mirror is absolutely magnificent. Most beautiful mirror you've ever seen in your life. This golden, um, wrought, beautifully intricate, delicate frame. Clearest mirror you've ever seen. Um, engraved in the bottom of your mirror are words that are written in Sylvan, um, but they rearrange themselves if you can't speak Sylvan. Um, but it says, whisper me a tale true and forget you ever knew. And forget you ever knew? Yep. Whisper me a tale true and forget you ever knew. So what is it looking for? Whisper me a tale true and forget you ever knew. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I do that. Uh, well, I've got the forget you. So ever I do it. Part. Um, but the true part, like how how do you how do you pretend you don't know something and then and then it still be a true story? Uh, hey, mate. Uh, uh, I think you're gonna have to give up a memory. Yeah. Well, I can. Uh, uh, you know, I can. Oh, that'd be a very patriotic type of thing, like. Grampus, I could see that. That's yeah. small. So I can I can tell about the, the time when I decided to tell my parents that I was going to leave the, uh, the the library and and head out into the material plane and and because I I was I was finding myself bored and I wanted to see the real world and and set out on my own. So you tell the mirror this tale of your parents just wonderfully just like, oh, of course, um, you should go out and be your own person. We're so proud of you and the decisions you've made. And that very um, wonderful memory of them just supporting your dreams is now gone. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't remember leaving the Feywild at all. Um, that is not a thing that that's, but you also don't know that you don't know them right. so um the the pedestal lowers and as you guys kind of those of you who aren't participating kind of look around um you can see some mirrors are cracked um maybe the memory they told wasn't good enough or something like that and um, mm -hmm. they all kind of lower into the ground um and then titania stands again um and snaps her fingers and the pedestals rise again um waiting for Sathari to step forward this is with wit yeah, and I and I sing a, a really awesome song to Sathari, and I say, "It's you, mate. You got it now. You're gonna do great. You got it now." And he has botic inspiration. There you go. Which is a D10. A D8. D8. Okay. For ten minutes, and if you do fail it, you do it still. You could still keep the die. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so. Um. Sathari, so, as you step forward, um, sorry, as you step forward and look onto the pedestal, you see kind of a situation like you've got here, like there's like little raised seating, but it's for like teeny weeny things, like little teeny weeny, like tiny people. Um, 
and they seem to want to be entertained. And Titania says, may your wit be sharp. And again, sits on her throne and a small audience waits with bated breath. <laughs> so I had a baby brother and um, one time my mom came running into the room and said, oh no, your baby brother ate all the Scrabble pieces. And I said, oh, he's probably going to have a really good vowel movement. And, and she said, she said, well, I don't know about that, but I think his next diaper change could spell disaster. Ah. Okay, ah. go ahead and give me a performance because that <laughs> joke really depends on the delivery um, <laughs> give me a performance check let me get the eight okay just don't fail me dnd beyond <laughs> can you see it no Kiri, you can't no. see yes. it in the campaign oh my gosh is that what what's the plus get? eight <gasps> that's a natural 20 Whoa! total of 25 <laughs> i haven't even rolled the plus eight do you want that um, I mean, you don't. You don't have to roll if you don't want to. Oh, uh, roll they, they laugh uh, and continue to look expectantly. Like you're, you have to give more than one. Oh. Small joke. Man, come on, that one was awesome. Um, so <laughs> I'm thinking about being appropriate here. Um, I once went to a brothel so with a honeycomb and uh, no, I can't tell that one. Um, so sorry, if you want to give me a perception check, that might be helpful. <laughs> Alvaro's still chuckling in the corner. Disaster! <laughs> he looks right. You guys even poop! I might have a not. That's not good. That's not a good roll. Ten. Um, so a 10, even with a 10 out of the corner of your eye, you get a glimpse of somebody else um, on your right, kind of like doing a little dance and you get a, a group, uh, like you look out of your eye on your left and you see a guy doing like a science experiment. So you don't seem to be like hedge pinned into a specific thing that you have to do to entertain this, these tiny people. Right. Okay. So instead what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to <laughs> show them uh, the goods love and i'm like flap my arms <laughs> perfectly still and raise my wings <sighs> are you with me mm -hmm. i'm going to rise straight up Whoa. but when i do i slowly fade away like i'm coming up out of my body <laughs> because there's an illusion of me still standing on the ground with his wings up. Uh -huh. So I, Sathari is now up in the air, invisible, with an illusion down on the ground, who turns and looks into nothingness as I, up in the air, cast Summon Celestial. Oh, oh yeah! And creates another being, a celestial looking being of your description, beside the illusion of myself. I then make myself become visible, hovering in the air above them, acting like I'm doing puppet strings, <laughs> while I can control the illusion of me to dance with the celestial summoning. Wow. Yeah, like that's, I'm puppeting. That's, that's rad. Uh, I need... Impressive. Let's do a series of rolls here for okay. all of that. Um, so let's do... <laughs> give me a sleight of hand. Oh, no, she's okay. being her Okay, that's exactly the skill I have. Um, give me a sleight of hand, give me a performance, and give me a deception. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to throw that D8 on that sleight of hand. So go. where's my Google Dice roller? Um, <laughs> go away. And 06 gets added to that. So what's that for a total for your sleight of hand? The, the dice went away on D and D Beyond. Oh, Crap. it's eleven. I, I seriously think it was like six or yeah, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. five plus six. It's eleven. I thought you guys could see. Um, so I'm sorry. You want to you want to slide a hand and then performance. Slide a hand of performance and deception. Okay. Performance is a natural one. Oh no! For a total of four, and deception is eight. And I realize I'm failing, so I really start going into self-deprecation mode. Oh, Go like, come on, you idiots! <laughs> you dance like you're from the Feywild. <laughs> um, so the tiny people 
It seems um, so don't good. Don't like this illusion magic. They've seen mm -hmm. this before. This is old hat. Of course. They, they also are. don't like you saying you dance like you're from the Feywild. <laughs> and as as you kind of like realize that they are displeased by this, um, before you realize what's happening, you are pelted with tiny tomatoes um, <laughs> oh. that leave tiny little red marks on your face. <laughs> And I make my left. illusion fly off into the air and, and escape. <laughs> I go crawling back. Hey. Um, and then the, the pedestal lowers, um, but you, you do pass that one because you did so well with your bad joke. Okay. Um, so you look around to see the surprised faces of many Eladrin peppered with red blotches from many, many small tomatoes. Um, and a few with perfectly clean faces and dazzling smiles as they bow for their tiny audiences and the pedestal sinks again. Uh, Titania raises her hands and the pedestals rise at her motion atop the pedestal before is a set of gilt hand-painted cards in a leather case. Oh Name yeah! your number, draw your cards. With Rager, you might win or die. Um, and Titania snaps well, her fingers. wouldn't be the first the time. Yeah, and I sing a little song for Isa, and I say, Isa, 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 you're our, you, you can do it. We love you so much. You're awesome. And you get a bardic expression. So awesome. I walk up to Isa to slap her on the back and give her guidance, but then I remember that if I ever touch her, something about fire that never ends, and I don't give her guidance. <laughs> um, so, uh, Isa, if you do want to give me an Arcana check, you can. Um, I, you know, I, I will, I will do it just to get some more, glean some more information. That will be a solid nine. Uh, so these are just really pretty cards in this leather case. It seems that Titani wants you to tell her how many you're going to draw and then draw them. We are so out of our element in the Feywild. <laughs> Let's see. Look before, <clears throat> and I say, I'm going to draw, I'll draw five. Okay. Okay, so, um. Fearless. Ob obviously, as I'm sure we all as D&D players know, even our characters know, this is a deck of many things. Um, so, <laughs> um, oh Ash, you are going to roll me five D20s. <laughs> And we'll see what cards you get. You just grab five deck, five cards from the deck of the. Okay. That's what I said. Oh boy, oh boy. It's 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 been lovely. Oh, I oh, I've the rest enjoyed. Of us just kind of step back. Yeah. <laughs> I've enjoyed every every single moment with with each of you. Um. If if I if I so die, you will find my will, um, hidden in a box. Um. Out in the forest, first one who finds it, you know, gets gets everything. But um, <laughs> Isa, you, you died before and it didn't stick. Right, I've you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens this We've time. We've got so, your back, and and when this is over, you're gonna have to go hide that box somewhere else because Alvaro's already licking his lips. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, dice roll number one. Fifteen. Fifteen is the ruin card all forms of wealth that you carry your own other than magic items are lost to you portable property vanishes businesses buildings and land you own are lost in a way that alters the reality the least any documentation that proves you should own something is lost to this card also disappears so that box in the woods gone gone <laughs> just gone alvaro <laughs> steps back he is horrified he's like <gasps> what kind of evil magic is that Okay, draw again, re-roll if it's a 15. It's a Feywild night. 12. 12. Is the Flames card. A powerful devil becomes your enemy. The devil seeks your ruin and plagues your life, savoring your suffering before attempting to slay you. This enmity asks until either you or the devil dies. So... Dead. Somewhere in your gut, you get a feeling that there's a devil somewhere that just really hates you. I mean, you know, it won't be the first time. His name is Steve. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Roger can help you out with Steve. 
Um, so yeah, there's two. So give me another one. Reroll a 15 or a 12. 16. 16. Um, I don't know. I never know how to say this one. You're y'all. Yay. Anyway, the cards Medusa like this is curses you. You take a minus two penalty on saving throws while cursed this way. Only a god or the magic of the fates card can end this curse. Wow. Yay. <laughs> um, two more. Oh, boy. 18. 18. The Comet. If you single-handedly defeat the next hostile monster or group of monsters you encounter, you gain one level. Otherwise, this card has no effect. All right. So far, nothing super disastrous has happened. You, the, next, the, the next squirrel. You better find it. Oh, we've got one terrible. more. You can one more. You They're can the DM in our other game. Time. And then level up. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Ten. Fifty gems worth a thousand gold pieces each appear at your feet. Whoa. That's the one to get on this one. bad trade. I like it. <laughs> so you lost everything you owned, but gained. Lost everything, but gained everything. You're richer now than when you started this game. Um, <laughs> now step on that ant and get a level. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just take this. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, okay, so um... I mean, you know, it was great. I got, I, I lost everything, made a new enemy. Yep. You know, got cursed, which yep. you know, that's that's Tuesday. <laughs> and um, you know, I mean, you know, I might, I might get a little bit stronger. You know, who knows? It could happen. Um, and yeah, I'm now rich, richer than my wildest dreams. So all in all, evens out. I'll help you carry any of that if you need some. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, Elvira. I got it. I got a pouch. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's f Actually, no, I do need a pouch because I lost all of the worldly possessions. So yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um. So as you look around when you're done, some of your competitors are just gone, just oh, full yeah. gone. <laughs> um, a few seem completely unscathed, to save their pallor. Others hold beautiful magical weapons. Another stands completely naked and is quickly escorted out of the arena. And another fights a battle with a skeleton clad in a tattered black cloak carrying a spectral scythe. So there you go. Sorry, Sorry. In. Battle with death. <laughs> uh, so yay, with wager. So your pedestal goes away. And Titania stands and the arena clears. The party behind you disappears, Alvaro. And so does all the noise. Before you, you see yourself. Roll right. initiative. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh no. no. I rolled a 13. Okay. Modified 13. Okay. Well, your dark Alvaro rolled a one, so you get to go first. Sweet. Which is good because I need to look at your <laughs> fight sheet. <laughs> um, I got it. Can we do anything? No. Well, the donkey did tell you that we would fight as one since we're so weak. So you guys, uh, <laughs> but you you can't see him. He is gone. Gotcha. Oh, okay. And he can't see you. He can just see, like, he's in, like, a dark room with a double of himself. Gotcha. Okay. You can do this, Elvira. It's about time I found someone nice. <laughs> and then I see the look in his eyes. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> What a handsome devil you are. I really don't want to do this, mate. Um, okay, you're drawing your weapon. I see how it is. <gasps> Wait a moment. I've got all my stuff, right? Yeah. You didn't lose all of your worldly possessions. So, Ash, <laughs> if you were carrying any of the loot from last time, that's gone. <laughs> well, you said it was all worldly possessions except so magic items. Magic items. Oh, okay. You right. You right. Quick question. Well, yes. No, I'll 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 say this first. So, um, did from last adventure, did any of us take the arrows? I, I told you guys to divvy that stuff up. <laughs> I, I I thought I thought you had taken. I those. thought that, you took the arrows. That's what I thought. I thought no one else took the arrows. So, Sam, I'm pretty sure because I think you're the only archer in the group. 
I yeah. quickly grab an arrow well, from Hawthor's. Um, I quickly grab an arrow from Hawthor's um, quiver, and I shoot myself. I mean, like to shoot the other guy. Right. With my initiative here. Sweet. Um, a natural eight. So plus seven, which hits like whatever that is, armor class 25 or something like that. But I hit myself with one of Hawthor's Cupid arrows, which means alternate me has to make a DC wisdom saving throw um, with advantage. Um, well, he had, he got a 17 on his first one, so. Darn. All right. Well, that didn't quite work. But I've got ten more. You've got nine more. There were ten total. I mean, I've got nine more. <laughs> um, I mean, it I does do zero. regular arrow damage. I mean, if you yes. hit. Oh, very good. Regular arrow damage. One day, six plus three. Uh, seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Okay. Um, he is going to pull his bow out as well, and he's going to do the same thing. He's going to shoot you with one of Cupid's arrows, because he is a double of you. What? Oh! <laughs> he sees well wisdom saving throw. Would he count as an ally and an enemy for purposes of <laughs> sneak attack? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Wait, quick. I've seen this one before. Just, just defend. <laughs> <laughs> to modify 15. Oh, yep. You also save, so it also just does regular arrow damage. All right. Um, so that's a seven damage as well. <laughs> it really is a double. So, um, give me, um, give me an insight check. All right. Natural 20! Yeah! Okay, so all, you get the idea that although this guy just did the same thing that you did and you just took the same damage that he did, it's not one of those things. Okay. <laughs> it's not It's not a Dark Link moment. It, he's not just going to repeat everything you do. He does so, have his own thing. So the thought I have of stabbing myself... <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work. Probably not. Wait a minute. I know how to kill him. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a less, looper moment. All right. So yeah, less <laughs> less dark link, more you know. There was there was a story. It was supposed to be a Final Fantasy, but it was the fourth Final Fantasy, right. where the paladin had to fight himself as a dark knight. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so it is your turn, Alvaro. All right. So I'm gonna shoot another arrow. Natural one. I yeah. think. Can I use halfling luck on that? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna use some halfling luck. Halflings use luck on any natural one roll. Woohoo! Uh, and that becomes a modified 18. Which reminds me, I should have rolled for an. Mm, I rolled a natural one for initiative. But I almost corrected you because I thought, no! Yeah, 19 will hit yourself. <laughs> Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting Stop yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> um, so roll another DC 12 wisdom save. Oh, I dropped my dice. Um, this time he only got, let me look at his skills here, um, wisdom, so he got a 10. Ooh, Ooh. yes. So now, he falls in love with the closest, the creature closest to him. Which is you. Which is me. <laughs> and how could he not? And, and will do no harm and spend subsequent actions defending me. Or making loud and sappy declarations of its feelings. That's true. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> These effects last for one hour or until the object of love deals damage to the target. <laughs> um, so he just starts giving loud and sappy declarations of his love to you. And that's like for like five minutes. I mean, it just goes on until you're going to hit him. I go over and while he's talking, I just like take all you know i just start pulling out his short sword and putting it over here <laughs> his and grabbing arrows. his quivers of arrows and putting it on myself and i was like yes i know it's we're wonderful together aren't we yes and i just i completely like slowly just disarm them because mm -hmm. you know where all their secret time. places are they like you pull out the gold out of their sock where they you know it's hidden <laughs> seven daggers and time up time up <laughs> and then I start to undress him, you know, like take off his armor, some things like that. Not completely, you know. He thinks you're trying to get fresh with him, and he is enthusiastically consenting. 
<laughs> oh, baby. It's gone weird real bad. Yes, it has. <laughs> Kiri has become a full DM. Not only did she make Sathari do all those rolls, all those checks, now she's now she's yes anding me. <laughs> You're the one that said you undressed the being that was in love with you. What else is he going to think? I just, you know, right, right, right. And then, um, and then I say, oh, okay. And I do. Then I like grab some rope from his backpack and like start tying him up. Okay. Nice oh, it's, oh, it's getting, it's getting that way, huh? Okay. Nice nice and tight. And then, cut to black, cut to black, cut to black. And then a dagger comes out since he might be helpless. <laughs> okay. I mean, and, coup de gras. and if allowed, we're going to coup de gras. Shakur. So he's, you can, you can, um, you can stab him for sure. It's so wrong. <laughs> um, and I'm honestly a little. <laughs> so just to Tanya, um, concerned and intrigued by this display. <laughs> you just see her face kind of floating like a moon in the sky. <laughs> She says, oh, don't mind me, please. Continue. I'd, I'd like to do an insight check on what would be most entertaining, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> to Titania, the queen of the fae? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a zero. I did roll I did roll a modified 17 on like, you know, was she like is she like the dagger? No, not like the dagger. Like the dagger. No, She's just really intrigued to see if you're gonna kill him or have a, an intimate moment with yourself. It takes the word masturbation to a whole new level. This oh is what you've done God. to me, Brooke. What have you done to my game? I just I just tied him up in his skin. You undressed him first? <laughs> This is really weird. This is usually my part. <laughs> so when Titania goes, um, at this point we might just dagger, need to we might just need to take a break. It's yeah. almost two. When Titania sees you go in with a dagger, she's like, oh, "Oh, I was really rooting for you two. And she snaps her fingers. <laughs> um. And you see the elves around you fall. Some resist, holding themselves against the onslaught of themselves, and some come back to reality, breathing heavily, but they're otherwise unharmed. And Titania looks confused, yet satisfied. And this is where we're going to take our short break. <laughs> what? Oh,
And we're back. <laughs> Sorry, folks, we took a little longer break there just because we were having some technical difficulties. Good. But um, before we get back and into And some it, counseling sessions, you know, with all pros' choices. <laughs> we also saw um, We had to talk about what's appropriate we, to put on. On we, the we made we made Brooke watch the video. <laughs> um, so I do want to take a play. minute. Yeah, we were we were talking about what's appropriate on the internet. Is that what you said, Gary? Yes. Yeah, because um, nothing bad is on the internet. It's all clean and family friendly. Of course. Um, so I do want to take a second Jones. to give credit where credit is due. Um, the Midsummer Tournament itself, I have pulled from um, the DMs Guild. Um, I paid like. Two ninety nine or something like that for the specific thing. Cool. Um, and it's got like a picture of a guy. I printed it out. Um, this is a Feywild adventure for fifth level characters. I just dialed it up for these ninth level babes um, and cut out some stuff that I didn't like. Um, and but as you should. Kept it. Cool. Oh, did you mention See? the author's name? I think I missed um, that. I don't have. Oh, that. sorry. <laughs> I don't. Whoever wrote it, super rad. Super proud of you. Love you. You're amazing. You're great. Loved it. Um, it's been fun. Kiri's become an amazing DM. She's learned how to steal stuff. It's fabulous. Uh, but yeah, so uh, to <laughs> she paid for it. Dude, she stole it. I did pay for it. Um, I will say all of the stuff pre, like everything before they get into the Feywild, that is all me. Um, right, right. So all of that big plot stuff with the creation and the shadow sickness and all that, that's all uh, me. And that's going to kind of be our driving force for um, mm -hmm. future episodes and such that's what, nice. but, what's going to be our motivation going forward now exactly just so as around. uh titania kind of looks confused and disappointed uh she snaps her <laughs> finger for just a second you see alvaro on the ground tied up and naked and you're confused <laughs> and then he's gone and you see the regular alvaro i don't want to know of, right i don't want to say alvaro all of, all of the extra stuff you took off of Fake Alvaro disappears. So, like, if you don't get double, yeah, no, there's no way I can nice like, get double. Well, he can't, he can't, can't snatch a few things to give to me. Right. I, um, was, I was still a cookie for you. See? <laughs> it was still a cookie for you. Um. So the good news. Oh dang it! I lost my muffins. <laughs> you, <laughs> you won four out of the five tasks. Um, oh. So you get to participate in the maze. You see a few Eladra and are kind of escorted off um, because they didn't they they didn't win three. You have to win three or more to, out of the five to get all the way. I feel like I also have to probably have to borrow somebody's cloak. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so um, so Titania. Um, kind of snaps her fingers again. She says, you have succeeded in the tournament thus far, but how will you fare in the maze? And she snaps her fingers again. She's got like a snapping. Like she's really into it, man. Um, and you guys find yourself, Siles, instantly transported um, to what, if you look around, it's, you're in a swamp, which is not, you were, were not where you were a second ago. Um, oh, at all. There is a path winding ahead of you between pools of stagnant water leading eastward and deeper into the swamp. Well then. Yeah. Um, is this the part where we're supposed to stay on the path? Probably, yeah. Don't leave, don't leave the path. Right. Um, Even if we see a shortcut. No, 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 because it's not. I promise you, I promise you, you are not finding a shortcut. No. Is this isn't by chance happened to be like your backyard or anything, Alasad. Have you seen this kind of place before? No, no, this is nothing like my. Remember though, I I grew up more in urban areas of the Feywild. Oh right. So not not urban really. areas. Of yeah, the we no we don't we tend not to go to the uh, the the more wild areas because uh, you never know what's out here. Um, he doesn't go to Camelot. It's a silly place. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a model. Well, there's um, just one path, and it's east. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Alvaro, why don't you lead us? Uh, Isa, do you want to uh, bring up the second, or do you want to come through here? I'll go second. 
All right. I'll uh, tell you what, I'll take up the, the rear. Uh, <laughs> tramping, the tramping forward yes. proudly in, you know, my borrowed cloak or coat or whatever. Yeah. So I'll go my longbow out. Or the swamp in this case. Um, so uh, you come to way. a standing stone. Its face is worn smooth by Eon's path by eons past only the symbol of an eye half closed is still recognizable the path leads west east or southward so west is the direction you came from so you could either go east or south this is a thought you think you could use that wing thing like maybe you could just like flow up and see the whole thing no i can fly i can just fly over this whole thing and just map it out and just Walk us right through. Right. I mean, walk it <laughs> happen. Like, staying on the path, What's right? the worst that can happen? Right. Exactly. Sure. I fly They're up in the air, and then and we roll you credits. Hear, you hear um, Titania say, uh uh, 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 And you are grounded now. Your flying ability has been revoked until you finish the maze. I've never been good at flying anyways. Whoopsie, <laughs> whoopsie. <laughs> I... Alvaro remembers back to like the Christmas episode. He's like, "That's true. I remember." <laughs> I heard once that if you just put your hand on the wall and start walking, yes, <laughs> you'll be fine. You because right. you eventually find a door and then you can pick so, pocket. Yeah. Now the so, question is, left hand or right hand? Okay, so if we uh, we just came from the west, so if we are left hand, then we just keep going east. Okay, can I inspect the standing stone just a little further before we sure. bounce off? Uh, give me an investigation. Investigation. Dice. Solid five. Um, on the back, kind of towards the bottom, you see a carving of what looks to be male genitalia. Yeah! <laughs> oh, right. Like, that's okay. But it just ropes. No. <laughs> it says Jester was here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so east it is, I guess. The trail continues east and west. A hundred pairs of yellow-winged blackbirds' eyes turn in your direction, warily watching you from their perches on the limbs of a dead tree. So you can either go east or west. No, east. So we, so west is where we just came from, right? West is where you came from. So just keep going east. Uh, there we go, east. Okay. Hold on. No. <laughs> You've been going east this whole time. Yeah. You came from the west. I apologize. Let me. I need a little compass rose here on my <laughs> map here. Which, which way is north? Well, yeah. Just show. Oh. Just show us, and then we'll help you out. That's right. Just show us. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Let me show you. So this whole time you've been going um, north has been a solid wall. Um, you had one opening to the south mm -hmm. a minute ago with the standing stone. Um, so if you're continuing in your straight line. Westward and eastward, the path winds between bushes with razor sharp thorns. This is the path. Yep. <laughs> and then you get to a corner at this corner in the path, winding westward and southward, you find a deep lake. Something shimmers beneath its surface. Oh. Shiny. <laughs> Don't need to go there. Um, it's so. I mean, if you want to give um... me an investigation. You can. Any, anyone? Mm. Bro, bro, uh, 21. Eight. Ooh, better than me. The shiny, the shimmering thing moves. Ah, the shimmering thing moves. Uh, Alvaro. Um, I would like, yes. Why don't you go check out that there's a shimmering thing over there? I'm going to make a survival check, perhaps, to see if I know anything about shimmering things under the surface of the water. Uh, uh, give me, like, an... an Mm, this feels like a wisdom thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to say that. Um, it's not bad. It's 12. It's fine. Give, it's fine. It'll yeah, fine. give me like a, a, a wisdom check of some sort. Ooh. Modified 17. Yeah. Um, suspicious lake with underwater creature. Probably not the best idea. I'll reach out and put my hand, you know, like kind of grab Elisard's uh, belt. I'm like, Hold on, mate. Like, that's, 
I'm urban, but let me tell you, you don't want to be, no, it's bad. It's going to reach out. I can get you water weird. I don't know, something, fountains, they're bad. Like, don't. Right. I've uh, seen, well, I got that. I've seen this parchment. Is, okay. So let's... Um, there's a sign if you kind of go around the edge of the lake that says, beware. And then it has a picture of a kraken on it. Okay. Oh like God. I said, elves, krakens. <laughs> All right. Uh, out of game the, at the very another... end. So the, the path goes from, essentially, you're going around a quarter. So you're going from where you were, and now you can go down south. South. All right. So we go south. Okay. The path leads north, south, and west here. It is sturdier than in most places, and the warm stones offer an opportunity to rest your feet. So when you Alvaro keep going south, has, Alvaro west. has, oh, go ahead. South and west, yes. Alvaro has taken like this. He is suspicious of everything. So um, I'm like, without touching them, I want to inspect the stones. I'm like, are they are they safe to rest on? They don't have yeah. like fangy looking like, you uh, know. They're good. Okay. They're just rocks. All right. After a careful. But they're rocks sorry. in the Feywild. Right. <laughs> right. I These mean, they just come from rocks. somewhere. All right. Um, so um, from here, you can go every direction except east. You've gone as far east as you can, but you could go back north where you came from. You can go west or you could go south. Okay, so we west. should go west. Go back where we came from? No, because no. we just came, came from, from the north. Where is that? Right, yeah. I'm trying to draw it out and I'm getting lost. Yeah, but. so north, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, at this bend in the in the path leading south and east, you find a small altar. No mosquito will go near it. Hmm. Is this the mighty citronella of which I've heard of? <laughs> <laughs> Should I, can I do a so this one? This one if... again, you're just going around a corner. So if you're just going to follow the path, it's just going to go south. I'm gonna check uh, out the altar. Okay, go. sure. Give me an investigation. Investigation, not my strongest suit, but you never know. Ah, uh, twelve. Um, there's a lot of lemongrass. Um, there's some. <laughs> there's a small candle, um, burning on the altar that smells of citronella. What? <laughs> okay, so. Right, yeah, this is fine. It's just a no. It's a no. It's a no skeeter zone. Oh yeah. Uh, so you could essentially you can go back where you came from, or you can go south. Okay. Should we take? Should we take it? I was yeah. thinking. It was, I, I was thinking the same thing. We should. <laughs> we should take some. So go like, south. Or at least pick a plant. Can we pick a plant? He says with his hand over one. Can we pick from a plant? What? So, if you go south, soft lights are dancing above the paths in different colors. North is blue, south is green, and west is orange. Uh, sorry, east is orange. You cannot go west here. That is a wall. Right. Um, well, blue is my favorite color. That would be back the, to the square you just came from. <laughs> Isa says, you know, blue tiefling. Mm-hmm. Right. If we go east, right? If we go, uh, if we go east, I think we're gonna hit another area that we didn't travel yet. But let's, so let's go east. That's what I think too. Okay. Here, the trail winds northward and westward between a cove of petrified trees. You're at another corner, but this right. one goes. So if we go north, we should hit the same spot that we did before. So if you go north, the path leads north, south, and west here to sturdier in most places, and the warm stones offer an opportunity to rest your feet. Yeah. Well, oh, good call. So okay. now those, we those we rocks go... look real familiar. Yeah. yeah. So, so now we know we can go east and then go whatever the other direction was so, again. So, so we go west and then south. Okay, so now you're back in the soft light stands above the paths in different colors. Um, south is green, north is blue, and west, or sorry, east is orange. Okay, so we go south. A broken tower stands at these crossroads covered in creeping vines. So you can go any direction here. Okay. Shall we continue south? 
Um, well, so as long as someone's drawn it out, because I've lost, completely lost the plot. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, sure, let's keep going south. At this bend of the road leading north and west, the smell of rot is overwhelming. Delicious. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can only go west. I say we go west, young man. Here, the path stretches east and west. Large sections lie below the surface of the water. You will have to get your feet wet in order to cross. Go west again? But we have to get our feet wet. It's a little wet. How big is it? I can jump pretty far for how big. Like... It's not like deep. Yeah. Okay. Like so even let's... on Alvaro, it's below his knee. Yeah. Okay. Like so it's so on you guys, it'd be like ankle deep. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and cross over. And another bend in the path leading north and east this time. Ooh. Okay, so go north. Oh. There's only one way to go. Is north. Right. This intersection it, is made from sturdy worked stone. It arches over streams of water and leads north, south, and west. You should go west. Oh dear. Um, yeah, Do you become lost as well? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Just quite yet. Uh, let's go west. In the middle of this intersection, the path leads north, south, and east. You hear the voices of children singing and an overwhelming need to take a nap, just for a little while. No, no, ah, no, no, no. Ah, 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 ah. Not me. <laughs> okay, so we can go north or south. South was the way we were going earlier. Let's keep so going south. We should, so we should go south, maybe. The path ends at a circular plateau covered in the bones of animals. I don't think that's the end of it. So you can only go back here. There's no yeah. other paths. There's it's a dead, dead end. end. So let's go north from that one inter that one right. intersection. So with, we go back yeah. the, the singing intersection. The, the singing voices. Right. Okay, right. here the path runs north and south along a shallow pool where fish traps have been set up, but the roads have long since rotted through. And we can keep going north? You can keep, keep going, going north. north. Okay. The path flows eastward and southward. A rotten shack stands at its corner, but it's hard to believe that someone would choose to live here. Mm. Okay, so we go east. East, which may be taking us again back toward where we came, but we can try it. A trail leads north, east, and west. At the intersection lies a flat moss-covered slab of stone. And nothing else special about it? No. So uh, we're going to either keep going straight or turn north. Mm-hmm. Um, let's try going straight. A dead end. Not only does the path end here, you also find the remains of an Aladrin who must have gotten lost in these cursed lands. I check his body for stuff. <laughs> it's just a skeleton. It's just a skeleton. Oh. You only know it's Aladrin from the ears. <laughs> <laughs> they have okay. bone ears. Bone I like ears, it. yeah. Yep, not cartilage, full bone. <laughs> full, full on bone. <laughs> little, little secret they don't I tell you about the Aladdin there. Um, so okay. it's oh, so that's why they're so movable. In. Go back to where we can go north. Right. Okay, so from the moss covered slab of stone, you went north. You come to a standing stone. Its face is worn smooth by Eon past. Only the symbol of an eye half closed is still recognizable. The path leads east, west, and south. Oh, it's the beginning. It's the beginning. Isa receives the male genitalia she saw earlier. <laughs> Still there. Oh, yeah, same yeah. spot. Okay. Is there a way to uh, make the eye open? <laughs> no. Okay. Um... So we could backtrack to the. We could backtrack to the uh, to the four direction spot, and then instead of going. Instead of going south, we could go east. So there were two places that was a four direction spot. Yeah. There was and the tower, um, and then there was the intersection made from sturdy worked stone. It arches over streams of water. Okay. Go back to the go back tower. to the tower. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a broken tower stands at these crossroads covered in creeping vines. So you can go any direction you want. And we've already gone north and south there, so let's go uh, east. So if you go east, 
At this bend in the trail leading west and south, you find a paw print of something that is bigger than you. Well, for Alvaro's, that's not much. <laughs> hey, hey, just because it's true doesn't mean it's not hurtful. He's got a big heart. <laughs> so we turn uh, south. Watch so this path ends in a cove of trees. Hammocks have been tied high between their branches and appear empty. Okay. Well, these are different because the, the ones we saw before were petrified. So mm -hmm. we travel back to where we can go west on them. So back at the broken tower, right? Uh-huh. So if you go west, this path ends at the foot of a large monument that seems to be a grave marker. Okay. Do you want to investigate it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll just give it to you because um, you just walk up to it. Um, it. The grave is for a woman named Claire Voyant, and her epitaph reads, she never saw it coming. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't believe I was, I was writing this down. <laughs> uh, nice. nice. Fabulous. Okay. So by my calculations, back at that crossroad, the tower. Yes. You've tried all directions. Now, so if we go south, we should be going west again, correct? So if you go south, it's going to force you west yeah. um, for two squares, and then you can go north to the other big intersection. Yeah. Which now is that, but that's only That's west only north, north, south, and west. Yep. yep. So it's another yeah. three way. Okay. So then we haven't gone north yet. So let's go north. No. Eastward and southward, the trail leads through a bank of fog that is particularly dense. Or not eastward. Yes, eastward and southward. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, we go uh, east. <laughs> Wait. I heard of this before. Right. Something about a mist. Don't touch that fog. Right. But so what? If we go but what? East, if it's cold, okay. There should be a dead end. So well, you can only maybe. go east or south. Then we just came from the south. And you came from the south. Right, so, so let's east. go east. Okay, so as you go through the fog, the very dense fog, um, you hear... I think Barovia is lovely this time of year. I find so, myself subconsciously... Slow clap, and you hand. look up and see that you have arrived back in the Coliseum at the finish line. Um, you solved the maze puzzle. Huzzah. And I think you hit every square at least once. I was worried there for a minute that you weren't going to do any of my fun jokes, but you got there. <laughs> and I know. Yeah, too bad we didn't get any of the fun jokes. Um, yeah, where, where were those? Hey, 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 you're funny. So, <laughs> um, as you kind of exit the fog and you look around, you seem to be the only group that has made it back so far. Because um, they don't have Elizad. Right. Um, Road or tracker. So Titania appears before you, of course, clapping slowly um, Oberon at her side. Um, and she says, ah, you know, I was rooting for you. You were the underdogs. You're just so mm, inefficient. Mm, I can't think of the word I want. I but anyway, you have succeeded and you may ask one thing of me. Oh, well. What do you want? Wealth, power. No, all we are asking for... Alvaro starts agent, to open his mouth. And... ...is <laughs> the wedding present you received from your closest friend. And she, her hand kind of goes to her decolletage um, and kind of covers that pendant. And she says, now why would you ask for that? Because That's we have the right to by winning your tournament. Indeed you do. I just wondered your motivations. It's a very interesting and unique request. We think it might come in handy is there might be a bit of a row going between shadow and light coming up in the plains. Darkness is you didn't rising know about who, who Who asked you to ask for that? I'm just saying. There's no... A friend of a friend. friend. Yeah. It's a friend of our bartender. Wait, it's a friend of our... He made these great berries. Jack! The muffins. Have you tried one? <laughs> oh, darling, I don't eat carbs. Look at them. <laughs> nice. I haven't had a carb since... 
three hundred, four hundred years ago, darling? Was that when we had the cave? Total, total paleo is that? What? <laughs> why why yeah, not? Just what berries happened? Berries and nuts. Um, <laughs> why? Why not? What happened? Did you lose your taste? Are Up you attempting look? to insult me, Angel? I'm well, not clever you enough to do that. You were skating on thin ice, there, mate. <laughs> I'm not clever enough to insult you. Right, because that's why the Tony so, we lost is because nothing was funny. Exactly. Um, I got you. Sorry. Before I... This is a very specific request. Uh, just... I mean, what, 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 show me in the contract, love, that says... I mean, no, you just... You're gonna get it. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm just, just, I'm just curious. Well, like I said, we say it's a, it's a, it's you know, a friend of a friend. I feel like it's only right that the person who gave it to me knows where it went. So yes, yes. and I, I let's agree. Let's do that. It, it, and it she is. snaps her fingers again, and um, then you see the physician appear, and he kind of looks startled. Uh, knew it. Uh, knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and she uh, says, "Okay, love. They're asking for this beautiful gem that you gave me for our wedding." Now what in the world do <gasps> they want that for? And the physician kind of looks down at his feet and says, the best friend? Did they, they, they won the tournament, yeah? And Titania says, of course they won the tournament. Well, if they won the tournament, they can ask for anything. They've asked for this item. You have said that they could ask for anything. You didn't put any stipulations on that. That's, so, what, told her that's what I said. There's not a return policy. I feel like they're just asking. You know them, don't you? This is never met the man before in my life. I ain't seen and it she once. um she snaps By her the fingers way, you again. Heard those muffins. She snaps her fingers again and vanishes, but the um the amulet kind of hovers in the air for a second and drops to the ground. Um <laughs> or it looks like Sathari's gonna try to catch it. Yes. <laughs> and um the physician kind of looks around. Right underneath, but it, you um, the physician kind of looks around. He goes, "Right. Um, why don't you lot hold on to to that for a while? I've got I've got some errands to run, but there's some very nice people." Um, Who are you? I don't even. I don't know. You have never met you before in my life. Go away. I don't care about your business. Exactly. Wait, so wait, he's going to snap to his fingers and um, he's going to snap his fingers and disappear. And you guys can go to the feast, and the feast is wonderful. Um, um, they such a assure you, they assure you that you are even as um, you know, material plane people. You're welcome to eat as much as you want. It's not going to be an Inside issue. Check. Um, I mean, it's just fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's not a big deal. You have a good time. Hold on, let me get back to my notes. My other notes. Because <laughs> there's there's notes. Uh-uh-uh. Alvaro's whispering to uh, Sathari. So why do you think you played all dumb like that? And did you get the idea that, that he was the best friend? Like I, it seems as I was totally unexpected on that. Although, it was the uh, second Oberon, most uncomfortable thing I've experienced today. Although Oberon <laughs> and Titania. Don't say anything to you guys. Um, she does give you some curious glances a few times. Um, here we go. Um, so um, as the feast is finished, um, Oberon kind of motions for you to go back into the great hall where um, you entered. Um, and if you walk through that door, you're gonna find yourself back in the bar, of course. Mm-hmm. So, um, you find your you find your way back into the bar. An unknowing amount of time has passed. It is um, uh, it looks like it is the wee mornings of the hour uh, of the morning the, the wee hours of the morning again. Um, but you're not sure if it's the same morning or if it's a different morning. Um, and all of a sudden, the physician pops back into the bar moments after you cross the threshold. And he pants. He's out of breath. He's his look is like his clothes are disheveled. And he says. Um, so did she give it to you? Did you get the gem? Hold on. Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? <sighs> Why did you even leave? 
Elisard, it's it's me, it's Roger. Right. Your friends. Yeah. Um. It seems like someone had never met us before, if I remember right from just a little bit ago. Oh, that's Do you, right. He doesn't remember us? leaving the Feywild the first time. So he wouldn't remember any of this. Oh, that's Totania's magic. I can't undo that. This is lost. You're going to fill him in later. But I need to know, did you get what I sent you for? Yeah, we got the thing. Sathari, show him the thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Alvaro. What, yes? <laughs> I, what? The, the thing. He looks very impatient. The position does. All right, so I open up my backpack, and then I reach in, I pull out a pouch, and I open up a pouch, and pull out another pouch, and I pull out a pouch, and then I unfold a little paper garment, and there's the coin. No, not that. <laughs> the gem, <laughs> the gem is very important. Did you get it? Did you not? You should have gotten it. Well, wait a minute. You were just there in, in the Feywild when she gave it to us. Yeah, but she wouldn't right. give it to him. It's to us. It, no, mm, I, I know. didn't know if she gave, like... I was. Mm, I had it. Mm, just did you just show me the jump? But when she's oh. there, when she oh this one and oh, right, there, there it is. Good. We have to move because Shadow has been released. Oh. And that's where we're ending our session. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> dun dun dun. Wings. Our Living. first cliffhanger. Woo! Yeah. This is awesome. I like it. So when are we doing the next live show? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, well, so so what, what what would the next one be? Well, the next uh, one would be Sao Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so. and the Fight in the Darkness doing Sao No. No. Oh. That might be the... This has a very Red Dirt d d unscripted but perfectly aligned moment. That's fun. And, and, the universe. and you know, it might tie in with a uh, possible Extra Life. Oh. oh! Extra Life be coming up again. Woohoo! I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to talk about it. We'll have to talk about it. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Have to see yeah. what's, what's going on in the cards. Uh, or we could do Arbor Day. I think that comes up soon. <laughs> that would be really Labor cute. Day. I've had enough of Secretary's Day. Day. Hey, I don't <laughs> want that. Because <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. Technically, the next one would actually be Maybon. Maybon. Mm -hmm. True. Oh well, that that's either. true. Mm. Or Lunasa. You know what? If but you probably Solin, there... because um, pragmatically, as a teacher, I'm just <laughs> the whole month of August is exhausting, um, <laughs> and it takes me like a whole month to recover from that. <laughs> now we'll we'll talk about this a little further, and uh, as maybe the... put a poll out there in the universe, see what the fans want. We'll yeah. see what Kiri wants because she has to write. <laughs> we'll it. see what yeah. Kiri can do, Kev. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like limitations. As my <laughs> wife talks about, once you start school, you get teacher brain, and it's just it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, it's we're real good. Thing. You guys did great! Yay! Yay. So oh, Isa, Isa is now stinking rich. Very right. cool. Elisar has this James. Um, um, Jason um, Bourne moment. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who you people are. <laughs> I'm not I'm going into show business. Friend, and we shell bank account and like. We just... <laughs> I just, I, I just uh. picture Isa has somehow stolen like one of the tablecloths and is just draped in it. There's ah. the maze, by the way. <laughs> so it was real. That's cool. And you guys went this way, and then you went around, and then you went this way, and you went past the exit like twice. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yes, we did. All See, and not, all that's that because north, north and east. Oops. I didn't think of the exit as being in the middle, right? I was looking for an exit around the edge, but yeah. of course, but of oh, course, the and in the, so in the 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 mod. Um, that I took this out of. There's also a hunt, um, but oh! the, wild like hunt, a, yeah, wild hunt. Like, like yeah, yeah, that'd with, be awesome. After the white rabbit, right? Um, but I listen. The way they wrote it, it was kind of hard to 
like figure out exactly what they wanted you guys to roll for. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm confused by this and I'm worried about running long. So we're just going to cut that yeah. part. <laughs> yeah. Cut that right out. It was, that was a good teacher kind of brain decision there. That was good. Yes. If you, if you can't understand something, move on. Yeah. yeah something yeah. else. Cause yeah. So yay, you guys yay. solved all my puzzles. And I had a ton of fun with characters this time. It was really, <laughs> I, anytime Ash is on our side of the DM yes. screen, it is a blast. Yeah. I have so much fun when they are on our side. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that one was of these. Of one of these days, you're gonna get exposed to like one of my salty drow, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> okay. The interim, the interim session. Woohoo! Whenever that might happen. Um. So make sure you tune in on Tuesdays for A and M Talk D and D, and then make sure you turn in every other Thursday. So not this Thursday, but the next one. Um, for plausible deniability with Johnny and Brooke. I think um, we're trying to recruit a kobold. Yeah, Definitely. we'll see what's going on. What's going on with them? Um, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Um, now, go we, f- and don't forget, uh, new episode of Red Dirt D&D. This on coming Wednesdays. Wednesday or for our patrons on tomorrow. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Um, for all of the parents out there, have a great parent day tomorrow for Father's Day. All parents deserve all recognition on all days. Um. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Kiri, um, if we missed, if, if they missed uh, A&M or Plausible Deniability, or even if they're coming in here late, how can they see the whole show? Can we, can we catch up later? YouTube. 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 Yep. How long does how I've long does it this. last? How long does the show do to do our episodes last on Twitch here? Mm. Like ten days. Is it ten days? Uh, for so for Twitch, it remains on the Twitch channel for two weeks. Two weeks. There you go. So oh, wow. you, awesome. yeah, yeah, you can watch you can watch it here on Twitch for the next two weeks. But if you miss it, or if you want to go back and watch it again because you loved it so much, we do archive all of our Twitch streams onto our YouTube channel, which is, of course, Red Dirt D&D. Yes, yes, Red Dirt um, we, D&D. We try to make it real easy to find us. Um, if you just love YouTube more than anything else in the world, most of our episodes are on YouTube right now. I'm a little behind. Um, We're working with on it. The, with the end of school, but I'm getting, now that I'm in full summer mode, I can start slowly working on those again. Um, so, and I tend to do those in batches of like 10, like I'll go like one day, just get like a million done. And then I won't do any more for like two weeks, <laughs> but it's fine. We're coming up on our birthday. So it's keep awesome. an eye on our social media. We'll right. be promoting some stuff for that. Um, our birthday is happening a month from like today, isn't it? In like yes, July it 19th. Uh, it's yep. actually one day less than a month. Okay. On the 18th. Sweet. So slightly less than a month from slightly today. Less. <laughs> 30, 30 days since it'll be, uh, it'll 30, be red dirt one days year anniversary the paper anniversary that the means everyone gets a character sheet <laughs> paper which paper is anniversary. perfect paper anniversary it means we all get scrolls yeah what is what is the dice anniversary come on right yeah. figure that out <laughs> so you that can make Christmas some dice out of paper I remember right from Michael Cross Santa yeah. Um, but yeah I think we're good unless anybody has anything else they want to add thank you Kiri Thank you. It you guys pleasure. are fun to play good job, with. Good job, good job. Yeah. So. Thanks, guys. Thank you all out there in Twitchland for joining us today. Bye. I hope you hope you enjoyed this wild romp through the Feywild. And I super love the Feywild, so we'll probably come back a couple times, especially since we didn't get to see Elisard's parents. Yeah. And I like to imagine that his parents are like hippies, and they're like, yeah, man, we support you. Hey, Whatever man. you want to do, dude. It's all good. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, of course, he doesn't know that. Uh, he doesn't know they were supportive. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> but he doesn't remember. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Well, yeah, I'll say we'll have to see what happens on that on uh, next time. So, but once again, thank you for joining us. Joining us here on uh, the Red Dirt D and D Twitch for our uh, quarterly live show. It seems <laughs> you know whatever, whatever. But a uh, blessed, blessed midsummer to to all y'all out there, and stay stay cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll we'll catch y'all next time. Happy Bye. Juneteenth, everybody! Woo-hoo! Happy Juneteenth, midsummer. <laughs> <laughs>